All right. Flowing and natural. Makes it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you got Vince. Vince is just, you know, he's here because he's trying to keep a record. He's got a title he's got to hold on to. I then. I mean, I also like Lucio, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Last makes week, we, last two weeks, we had Aaron Frame on the show, and that was fun. Well, it was about three weeks now. Um we had Lucio on the, or Lucio. Lucio's been on the show many times. He's on the show again now. Uh, we had Aaron on the show, and that was a lot of fun. Very good conversations. Um, I got a lot of good feedback from uh, the one that it was just me, you, and Aaron. Um, but uh-huh. then I also yeah. got a lot of good feedback from all four of us because everyone just loves talking old haunt, and they love hearing stories. So uh, thank you all. And, yeah. And thank to my co He's a He's a good guy to talk about like old haunt stuff because he's so um... – He's so accustomed to all that stuff. Yeah. He's been around a lot of, he's been a lot of, I mean, been around, surrounded by a lot of legends yeah. at Haunt. So, including Gary. So, Gary knows a whole Bible filled book full of like memories. And then he's been around like older haunts, like Sir Biscuit, you know, all those other ones. Yeah. Yeah, no, so. it's, it, it's it was a lot of fun, dude. I love talking to Aaron. Uh, I love vibing with Aaron. The guy's a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man. Lucio, welcome to shoot the shit, season three. Thank welcome. you, thank you guys. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces here. I feel like <laughs> I just I just talked to you guys. <laughs> it's a, it's a high about like over a month. I think I feel like I just talked to you guys over a month ago in total. You I mean, both combined. I mean, I, I thought I thought it was funny when you were you had Vincent on as a guest because I'm like, wait, is he trying to get the whole like shoot the shit gang on for like a season and and, no. season? <laughs> and so we get him on and like it's a whole like com- it's a whole family thing, you know? We just yeah, you know, live and talk. Yeah, I've I've always wanted to have Vincent back on because I I just like we always seem to talk we it seems to go very well with the conversation and what the fuck are you wearing i'm wearing a headband my hair is bugging me right now you just remind me yeah you just remind me of that jim carrey bit from in Lemmy color when he's like wearing that little that that bra that little um that tank top that little skinny tank top yeah and he's doing like that gym workout (laughs) have you seen it yeah, yeah, and I, he's his and his uh, his teeth are all crooked, and he's like doing doing. The, I don't know what the fuck the whole video is like, but that that look is exactly that. <laughs> it's well, dude. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on, though. It's a it's a honor to be here. I mean, I think I've been on this this uh, podcast, I think before, right? I think you've done two episodes of Shoot the Shit, and I know you've done two or three episodes of Mindless Horror. Yeah, Mindless Horror are done for sure. We've done that with, uh, I think the last one was, well, when you, when you talked to me about Carnival, and then also uh, you we did the one with uh, Aaron and Wyatt back <laughs> then. Did we? I lived in Tustin. Yeah. Yeah, that was so, that was actually, that was um, distracting because it was just, I had, you had a I had a old hair at that point too. Yeah, now I'm shaved. <laughs> I'm completely. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm good sti- on you. No, I appreciate. It. I just I think I'm kind of sticking with this whole look now for until because I think I've told maybe you. I think I told Vincent too. Is that when I want to grow it, I, I will let it grow and grow, and then all of a sudden it gets to a point where I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to. I I don't like the the phase where it's the hair is kind of looks weird in some ways looks kind of silly yeah it's like me wearing a wig and i'm like i don't want to do that and then i had to go back and doing you know i had to go to a barber shop again and go get my haircut again like i always did like every freaking month i go to like uh cosmetology uh uh barber shop over here that you know they have students that come by and get taught and then i pay like 10 bucks and it's cool but uh, the thing is it's like it's every it's a, a different kind of barber so i don't you know i don't have the same 
one. Yeah. And, and there's some of them are very full, fully like, you know, experienced, but some of them are like, like I had one that came up to me once and said, like, oh, all right. Like I'm about to cut your hair. I'm like, okay, cool. And then, um, I said, I, she, I think she asked me, oh, she asked me, uh, what is this your first time? um coming by i was like no i've been here a few times i went to there was an old location in orange i used to look i used to go to and now i go to this one in anaheim and she's oh it's cool i was like oh okay it's just i, I asked her is this your first time she goes yeah it's my first time like, <laughs> oh, you're like shit <laughs> shit dude like i get another barber? I, she did she didn't what i would have been like can i get another barber please yeah can i get another one please I get that guy over there right across. That guy seems like he's been yeah. here for a few months. Hey, yeah. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, the teacher would come by a few times to actually like do like you have to do this and do that, change it, change it, and uh, like watch out for the sideburns. Like, what what kind of sideburns do you because you want? Of, why do you go to the fancy shit, bro? Just go to the place that charges like twenty dollars. <laughs> oh no, that's fucking worse because they why? will go. You're spending there for four hours for like details. They're like probably plucking every single hairline of your fuck. <laughs> no, dude, that's if you go to the that. one you're going to. If you go to just a regular barber, they just fucking cut your hair and get you out of there. They don't fucking fuck around. You're you're saying that? Did you just say that I would pay two hundred dollars for that? Twenty or twenty dollars? Oh, oh, twenty. Twenty okay. two zero. Why would you? If you're paying two hundred dollars for a haircut, then I'm sorry, buddy. You're just an asshole. Yeah, it's fucking that. Yeah, that's... You're like changing color. You're... Yeah, like you're sorry, doing... my, I'm sorry. My landlord... that, that sounds like some like rich douchebag shit right there. It does. Like, <laughs> I mean, um, I don't even pay for haircuts anymore. Or, I, or I how about you just do this? How about you just shave your whole head off and then you can cut it on your own? Well, I was on your say own. Say that. Like, time. I don't even cut my own hair. Like, my uncle. I was fortunate. You know how much money I saved over? I saved over ten bucks a month every single time and then that's 12, 10 times 12 what two hundred dollars maybe 10 times or 12 isn't that like 10 times 100 <laughs> sorry i suck at math 120 dollars <laughs> yeah yeah you're asking a person that didn't succeed like much this. in college and i'm like god what time is it? <laughs> uh no it's, yeah. it's 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 uh yeah I, I i don't cut my i don't cut my hair my uncle over covid he used to cut hair like back in the day and stuff so he uh was giving us all haircuts over covid and he gives good i mean he can get fades like all the lineups all that stuff like so i'm simple yeah. like uh, and you guys have seen it many times i do it at least once or twice a year i'm probably gonna do it pretty soon for the summer but like i always shave my head all the way down and I, it just I let it grow back like and then I try to let it grow back for haunt season because I like to call it my uh, my wolfman look and uh, it mm. makes sense for haunt season. Right. So it's like, you know, and then uh, and then I shave it off again and then it grows right back. So I'm due to shave it off pretty soon. So uh, and then it'll grow right back just in time for haunt season. It yeah, that out. makes sense. So like yeah. twice a year I get a haircut. You do that. I I used to get. Yeah, because it would happen every month. But I think the best one I used to get was one in last season, uh, when I when I was in Ghost Town, because I had it fully sh clean, shaved on the side and used to comb it. Yeah, I don't think if you guys remember that one, that I was do. like the best. That was when you came back as ripped hostile, bro. I was like, yeah. whoa, <laughs> look at this fucking guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrified I, of this motherfucker now. I, I came back with vengeance. He did. That motherfucker straight went, <laughs> she went to sleep that whole season. He's just working out the entire time and hostile. Dog, He's like, guess oh, like, you know, motherfucker. <laughs> Guests will come by and just run around in Fog Alley. I used to be scared and they used to look at the dark corner and I used to stand right there. <laughs> just, just fucking medicine with his muscles and shit. Mug Jack. Like, Where's that eight I, pack hostel? Let me see that shit, bro. That eight pack is coming soon. I'm trying to get I see that. what I mean? Like, watch. Now we're going to get that crazy eight pack. I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm really. I've been working out. As you guys know, I've been working out tremendously a lot every Every morning about 5 a.m. Clanging and banging, bro. Uh, I work about s six times a week. Every time I go, it's about. I think. Ten, like every before I go to work, so like ten ish or like nine. No, sorry, eight to nine, like eight to nine ish, and I go to work right after. So how long do you spend six times a week? An hour. An hour. 
Yeah, if I want to, I can go up to at least an hour and a half. But do you I'm do not... you each day of the week do something different? Like you do bats, yeah. tries. Yeah, legs. so I kind of keep it to a routine. So I'll do. I was doing a a a routine every single week. So I'll do. It was like chest, shoulders, arms. And then I'll do some like I'll do a mixture of things like maybe like shoulders and arms and um or and then I'll do like cardio. Right. But <laughs> it got to seem to be I, I got to seem to get bored off of that. So I was wanting to ch change the routine. So I changed it to, you know, like let's do arms this this day and then the next day like do backs and then um after that you know just switch it up i just yeah. didn't want to keep it the same guy i just seemed to i it got very bored off it wasn't too motivated to go in to do that so i was like i just gotta change it so i changed it it's got a lot better i'm doing a lot more i'm trying to figure out a lot more uh routine like different styles of exercising as far as like doing backs and shoulders because i i that's another thing too it's like i was doing the same i uh, work out and i always have to think to myself i'm like okay you have to trust the process you gotta trust yourself to get like to make sure like this this kind of routine you're doing it's gonna get you somewhere right and of course it did it did you know i've i mean i've gained whatever i gain as muscle you know if, you know as today but at the same time i'm just like uh, i'm like ah, i want to do something different i want to try something challenging for myself so I'm trying to do like different types of things. I'm doing like different types of tricep exercises and biceps. And um, I'm trying to be more like you. There's other things I have to be a lot more slower with my work workout routines. So I, I just don't I, I kind of witness that too from other people. If you haven't seen it, if you go to gyms, like people are just like, you know, doing that kind of workout. And I can't yeah, I can't like seem to nuts. do it. I'm like, what are you? What are you going so nuts for, bro? Chill. chill. Well, they're all high on fucking C4. That's what they're doing. Oh! They're high on C4. Yeah. But they're, it's, I think it's just a, it, it is, a, it's, it is a routine. It's, it is a type of exercise you can do. It's a, it's a faster exercise. But I, I find that it might be controversial if I say it. I'm, I feel like that's the laziest way to do it. What? To do it faster. If you do it at a steady pace, I think that's helpful. To me, if, if, you, if you do it at a steady pace, uh, not only are you getting the full you know, workout like you should be, but mm -hmm. you also risk, uh, you, you lower your chances of getting injured. Yes, that's, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm implying, is that I, the, the risk of getting injured is, you know, very low, but also you can, you can get injured from doing slow workouts if you can't, if you're carrying a overweight, I mean, something that's way too overweight for you, you know, the, the people do, I've seen people do these fucking uh, these slow paced 110 pound dumbbells. I mean, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it's, uh, like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get I don't, it. I don't, understand. I don't get why, I don't get why, you know, this is another thing. I, I just talked, it's kind of funny. I just talked about this. Talked about this with Art Dracula. Um, we all know him, fucking bitch. But um, <laughs> you just talk. He he talks about how he was he would do one rep of hundred pound dumbbells, and I just, and we're all talking in this chat. It's like me, Vi, Art, Aaron, and then I'm going like. Well, what the fuck? How is this beneficial to you? And he goes, well, it just makes me stronger. And I think I just got in this like debate with him. I was like, this doesn't, I don't see this. It seems to be very helpful for you. If you can do at least like one, like maybe five, like three reps of a hundred pound dumbbells for 10, like maybe three or four sets, then that's, that's maybe beneficial, but you're doing it for, you know, like just one and you're walking away hmm. and then he goes well i'm doing other things i'm like that's great that's great you're doing that but yeah apparently that's that's just that's something doing that is something to build you build you more stronger 
which I'm not like, like I said, I'm not against it. He can do whatever he wants. Um, he said he's, yeah. And the other day he's, he's, and then today he looks really, he's, he's bulked up for sure. But yeah. for me, I, I just, I, I don't see that. I don't see that in some ways. I agree. I can, I can agree. I can accept like what he said. I just don't a hundred percent agree with what he's doing with, with that kind of stuff. So, but he does other workouts, but anyway, what's I just your, don't, what's your what? max bench bench. Um, that that's that one. I don't really do as much, but as far as like dumbbells, I I'm right now. It's kind of silly that I'm saying this, but I'm doing it up to 35. That's not silly each all, dumbbell. Man. That's, well, I'm building. That's the thing. I, I don't go to like, I'm just like going back to this hundred pound dumbbell. Like I, I don't see myself doing that. Like so quick, like I don't jump into this hundred pound dumbbell because I want to like build, like I, if people want to do it because they think it's a, um, like, it's like an ego it, 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 yeah, it goes overnight. They think it's like, I'm going to grow muscle overnight. I'm like, that doesn't fucking help. It does not. It's a process. It's not, it's a fucking, um, it's a marathon, I'm not a fucking, what is it? The What's it, what's that, what's that quote again? What? I'm fucking up again. It's, it's, a, a it's a marathon. Was it? It's a marathon, not a sprint. There you go. My brain. Hey, I don't need a gym membership. I got my job, dude. My job already gives me enough lifting right there. <laughs> Well, I mean, you come a custodian in high school room. Be like, get over here. I need to get under you. Yeah, dude, you just lift boxes all day. Take, you know, you're lifting constantly. Trash bags, bro. I'm like this, bro, as I'm doing the lifting the trash bags, bro. Sure, shit's falling out of it, but fuck it, you know. I'm just going. Yeah, I used to do a lot of like my work does a lot of cardio too. What you say, Vincent? You hit the weight room while you're cleaning it. I don't clean at night, so I'm in the morning. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. If that was the case, I wouldn't be doing this podcast right now, Vincent. Come on now. <laughs> Forgot. Well, those are beneficial, though. I mean, if you do that kind of, you know, if you're doing just cardio work, that's helpful. Well, no, like, I, but, like I've had so many people come up to me within the last year or two and be like, are you losing weight? I'm like, I'm not trying to, but I am happy that it's happening. Um, mm -hmm. At my heaviest, I was 320 pounds. I'm now down to 275. Nice. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, it's really good. Like the last year or two that went down, but uh, that's probably dieting, right? No, no, not at all. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm just starving myself. <laughs> no, I'm just starving. I'm not doing. I it on mean, purpose, one though. piece like, of chicken a day. <laughs> no, it's like I I don't know what it is. Like my appetites change ever since I I got COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Like I. I eat like one thing a day and I'm fucking full at night. So, you know, I just, I try to just kind of space out. I try to have at least two meals a day. That way I at least can have something in my system. Um, but I do try to space out when I eat. Like I, I eat like lunch at like 1130 and then I eat dinner. I try to eat dinner around like anywhere from like 430 to like anywhere from 430 to like 730. If I have to go later, I go later sometimes. But um, yeah, I try to yeah. kind of balance that out. That way I'm still getting at least two meals a day. I know you're supposed to eat three, but at least if I'm getting two and I'm drinking like lots of fluids throughout the day, so Yeah, that's a that's very helpful too. Do oh, you I do didn't eat a lot of fluid today because it was just coming out of the sky, so Yeah. <laughs> polar ass weather. Um yeah, it's you can as long as you drink a lot of water throughout the day. They say sixty ounces of water help is the max but i, feel like I don't you know i've heard studies water. that say like you drink too much water you're gonna drown like too much water is not good yeah. for you and then it's it drowns you, some i think it drowns your liver or something like that well you gotta imagine it, too like water puts on weight too you have water weight in your body and yeah. so i mean that's just you're well, just i have adding, a lot of water weight then yeah <laughs> i have too much water weight i i feel like sometimes when i do when i step into the weight scale I look at it. And I'm like, I thought I was like 197, and I'm at 200. And I'm like, <sighs> the best. It's gonna sound disgusting, and I don't mean it to. It's just nice. literally a, a, a known fact. The best way to tell if your body needs more water is literally by looking at the color of your urine. If it's yeah. yellow, it's just yeah. you need more water. If it's clear, you're you're doing pretty well. If it's like in the well, oh, I know that for a fact, sir. Hydrated. So you like genuinely, you want your pee to look like like lemonade. Yeah. Anything lighter than that, you're technically like. 
like if it, if it's like clear clear you're overhydrated and if it's like a darker yellow or like a brown like if it's brown then like you're definitely severely dehydrated yeah and I, if know, it's red, I know it's a little disgusting audience but it's just it's the facts of life they also said that you know if you eat asparagus that pe- the your 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 urine will actually smell bad it actually smells so potent yeah some people some people their urine smells like cooked asparagus like when you yeah. like, you pee and when they mm-hmm. have had cooked too much asparagus How yeah if you have too much saying this means gonna end two minutes i just pay this goddamn bill i was just gonna tell you hey uh you got a 10 minute warning up yeah. here but we gotta fucking We're in that sp- ESPN sports channel when they have the talk for like two minutes. They're like, okay, who's gonna be in this? <laughs> they like start talking really fast. Like, there's like one guy, like what a studio, the other guy, the other studio. I don't know what that fucking show is, but they're like one old, yeah, older uh, white guy and one older black man. They're like back and forth and talking. What was it? PTI. Pardon the interruption. Because oh have, yeah, like, they got like, and then they have like a list of stuff. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is this show? Yeah, I, oh, God. I, I came prepared today. I was like, I'm gonna bring my wallet today in the studio because I may need it. <laughs> I was right. I was right. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. I I I know that for a fact. For being like, you know that when you're dehydrated, when you, your your entire starts turning dark. I mean, not to go so deep down, but like I I feel like I've seen this before when um uh, when I was in my you know in my alcohol phase. I was like, oh fuck, I'm drinking like my urine is like Coca Cola dark. I need to go away. <laughs> I need to, yeah. It was so bad, but um, yeah, you should really just drink drink a bunch of water, eat fruit too. Also, eat almonds. Good for you. Almond, almonds for sure. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah. Almonds for sure. Almonds for sure. Almonds, pistachios, cashews. Mm-hmm. Nuts are good for you. But that, oh, I don't know if that's even that good. Pistachios? There's pistachios. Pistachios are pretty good. Yeah. Like, or like they're they're good for you. They're not as good for you as like cashews, but like they're still yeah. it's, it's still a good nut. <clears throat> what? Yeah, that's true. Hmm? What? Sorry. What? What? Vincent said it. I didn't. All right. All Shit. right. Ugh. Um. Okay. Hey, by the way, happy Star Wars Day. Yeah, happy Star Wars oh. Day. Happy Star Wars Day. Dude. You got your oh, your I, I, shirt on. I. Did you guys see that with the uh, uh the Carrie Fisher yeah, she got her honorary thing? Day. I think they're calling it now a Carrie Fisher Day. Two. Eh, I think today they called it Carrie Fisher Day because oh media yeah. has unlimited yeah. minutes. Oh wow. Why is the timer still ticking down? I feel like that M M&M M preview at the movies. <laughs> uh guys, why is the timer still going? <laughs> I don't know why it is for you. Right now I just said now you have unlimited minutes. Oh, oh well. I'm still well, host, right? Yeah, I think so. If oh, yeah. if I disappear in six minutes and fifty five seconds, then hey. <laughs> But Bro, boom. I I was livid today because I found out the IT guy at my school has never seen one Star Wars film. Really? And but I feel he, like it's a, who does it? <laughs> but he is like he like can literally explain all the major scenes that are literally li- all he needs to know about Star Wars. To be honest, like he's like I know there's this and I know this happens and I know that happens and I know there's this thing and I know there's something called this and I know that but I'm like that's literally everything you need to know. Why don't you just fucking watch the movie? Does already? he know of the tragedy of Dark Plagius the Wise? Not don't get into that because not not even no. I that. need to, hey, that's a pretty important scene. Not from a Jedi. <laughs> it's an important scene. I know, I know it is. I had to rewatch everything again. I I feel like I watched it. I want to say it's two years ago. Close. What they all all yeah. like in, like in in like in order, yeah, like a timely order. You have to watch it like that. Apparently, there is what what is the actual timely order? Like it's the correct one, order. It's one, two. Uh, then it's the Clone Wars. Then it's the second half of the Clone Wars, and then it goes into three, and then um, 
I believe after three is Mando. No, Mando no, is uh, Mando's after six. Uh, is it Andor? No, it's not Andor. I think uh, it's, it's uh, Star Wars. Rogue one. What? Rogue One. No, it's not no Rogue, rogue one. one is before I think it's, Andor. I think it's Obi Wan and then Han Solo. And, oh yes, and then um, Star Wars Rebels, uh, Bad Batch. No, it's Bad Batch, Obi Wan, Bad Batch, and Obi Wan around the same time. Um, yeah. Then it's uh, Star Wars Rebels. I thought Rebels happened after the Empire, though. No, 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 because there was Where? another animated show. There was another anime show in between that that happened, but um, I can't remember. Anyway, um, and then there's, yeah, it, and then there's, uh, let me see. So then, there, then after that, it's Han Solo, and then it goes Andor, Rogue One, four, New five, Hope. six, um, Mandalorian, and then seven, eight, nine. Don't forget about the Book of Boba Fett. The Book of Boba Fett is it's season one and two of Mandalorian, then Book of Boba Fett in season three. You mean like the Book of Boba Fett for one and two, and then it's the Mandalorian right after? Yeah. God. Does everyone <laughs> fucking hate this show so much. Like I don't like I never I never said I didn't like it. I love the origin story. Don't even give me the fucking bullshit that they do they, they made the characters soft. It's like do you not understand the premise of this fucking show and what this did for him? Motherfucker literally escaped death and he was gonna die in the middle of the desert. The sand people took the Tuscan Raiders took him in. And fucking like yeah, they treated him as a slave, but then he proved himself to them, and he they took him in as one of their own, and his life got redeemed, and he became a better person for it. Therefore, yes, he is still the same badass Boba Fett, but a more fair and a more wiser Boba Fett. That's what people don't seem to realize is like he was the only way that the only reason he was the way that he was in the original trilogy it was because it was do or die. It was either work with the Empire and stay alive or go against the Empire and potentially die. And he chose the way of staying alive, making money, and going with the Empire. That is the only reason why he went with the Empire. That and he probably had a grievance against the fucking Jedi and shit because they killed his dad. Regardless, that's, that's true. leave yeah. fucking Boba Fett alone. I love this new Boba Fett. He's older, he's wiser, I, I, and because he is older, he's probably slowing down. I don't I don't seem to be against it. I think it was a great I'm not saying story. But I'm like, saying I, general, yeah. I gotta let that out. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is me off. I, I just see I see that I see it as a good origin story, and then him where he he's at now the versus then the Mando coming in and actually that kind of relationship starts to uh, collide, and then you kind of understand like oh this is how Boba and, and Mandalorian are like kind of colliding together in this trilogy, whatever it is or this universe that they have surprised he hasn't showed but, up in season three yet I i'm still watching it so don't tell me oh yeah they're in a single he's, episode of season three so he showed up in the that new game that came out uh, uh, uh jedi yeah. survivor yeah Why would you he came up with Spar that, lucio oh sorry <laughs> come on dude <laughs> edit it out Sorry, well, I can't that, that hear out. it, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! It was like when I got the fucking ending to Jedi uh, Fallen Order fucking spoiled for me of who he fights at the end. I'm like, Edit fifteen point three five. Co. <laughs> Sorry, that's like that's... shit. I want to be surprised about. Like, what do you see? It, you're like, fuck! Oh! <laughs> Look at that see, fucking fly! Even... We're gonna be going through the entire game. Like, is this? Hey, trust up? me. Yeah. Is now I'm gonna be like, like, when the fuck is he gonna show up now? Because Lucio says he's in the game. Now, <laughs> I just gonna, now I'm just gonna be anticipating to look for him. I'm gonna fuck the story. I'm just gonna look Boba Fett. Some fuck wanted to freaking record on their Instagram stories. I'm like, all right. I've literally <laughs> avoided everything spoiler for that game. Uh, I've avoided a lot of spoilers for a lot of things right now. Like, I, and I'm on social media every fucking day. Well, we have to. I mean, we we do as far as our kind of hobbies or what we love to like do is like podcasting. It's like we we have to be on active on social media to like promote things. Yeah. So 
like seeing spoilers like for instance this guardian of the galaxy i really want to see i think i'm gonna see it tonight I like, if i won't if i say anything if you saw that no i won't too. i never have seen i haven't seen that either i haven't seen it if i have i'm, gonna go I'm the tomorrow. type of person i'm the type of person that i don't like spoiling big old reveals but i just thought this whole game wasn't a big thing so i was like okay <laughs> then uh but like as far as movies i'm very I'm very against people who spoil movies that are like going to be a huge hit or a huge story that's going to be a, a like a, a climax of something so like like as for instance like marvel movies i don't like hate people fucking spoiling them or uh dc movies i just only like people spoiling that too unless it's like kind of or it's star not that Star wars cameos or stars can that's that's another one too but i'm saying like those kind of like video <laughs> games i'm not against like i i can care less but as far as movies it, that's different i different I, I don't know i have a different character for that i think with video games and movies and tv shows even i just i like to go in blindly because i want to react like how i see everyone else react like i want to lose my shit like i want to be like oh oh this is happening right now oh my god <laughs> Like I want to, yeah. like I, I will say this, still to the day, the two best fucking movie premieres that I've went to are Infinity War and Endgame. Like the reactions, yeah, in those fucking movies were insane, especially Endgame. Like there was so many mixed emotions in Endgame, especially when like the ending scene happens, you just hear like everyone in the theater go from like cheering to like silent, like sobbing and crying and stuff. And I was like. Yeah. Wow. Like this is all of us as fans here, like <clears throat> in the theater, crying together, laughing together, having a great time together. Like this is insane. Like this is cool. Yeah. The that 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 end game was very like that. I think the fact that whole colliding together when they're coming from the the portal. Yeah. That Doctor Strange made, and that was cool. you see, like you see, you know. Uh, the Black Panther come up first, and you're just like, oh. and then you see the other one, yeah, rest in peace for him. And then he, there's like more and more. Then like Peter Parker comes over, like, Wah. and then then freaking Captain America starts saying like, Avengers, Ash. assemble, assemble. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, those ones are freaking cool. I love those moments. I think like I don't know what what else is a good like premiere that kind of shocked you. Um, I, I don't know. I can't even think of another one that's really. I would shocked say when you. I watched the Snyder Cut of Justice League, that fucking blew me away. Oh, that was really like good. I fucking I never lost used to watch Justice League until they released the Snyder Cut, and I've only ever seen his his version. Well, that, good. For Dude, you. I was you, so you, you were a, you're you're a, a more diehard fan than I was because. I was like, I need to see it. I need to see a live action Justice League movie. And I I thought Joss Whedon coming in was going to be a good thing. And then you find out everything that went wrong. And then you f see all the shitty CGI and reshoots. And you're just like, this was not what I was promised at Comic Con. Like, I saw a completely different trailer. And everything I saw in that trailer was not in this movie. What the fuck happened? And then the petition started. And I had so many people like, they're not going to fucking release it. They're not going to release it. And the minute it was announced, I'm like, they released it, motherfuckers! <laughs> HBO Max fact that they fucking midnight. I'm like, we're watching this shit mm -hmm. right now. And the fact that they released it in four parts too, that's good. That's I thought that was a great idea. Like you got man, I like that guy. Then they released it in four they different. Were going like to it's like originally, four. but then he was like, "Nah, just fucking release the whole thing." And I was like, "Yes." Oh well, like it's in. But you think of it, it's, it's like in, in four parts. chapters. Yeah. Yeah, and parts yeah. like in four different chapters, right? Yeah, but it's all in one movie. But I think that's that's cool because like you can get to watch like four hours with of like what Zack Snyder like was been holding off in that freaking. It made I'll I'll be honest with you for years. <laughs> it made me fucking like Jared Leto's Joker more. I really? I did too, dude. I they, I wasn't kind of impressed. They cut for one. They covered all of his tattoos, so that made me happy. Two. Given the right dialogue and the right director, you can make that shit into gold. I feel like, you know, um, David Ayer wants to release his cut of Suicide Squad too, because like he got screwed over. Like there was a 
point of DC just fucking over, like taking full creative control. And it was like it was like Vince McMahon taking over WWE. It's just you don't do it. Um, <laughs> and there was just a point there where it was like, what the fuck is happening? Like I'm promised all these shit, all this shit in the trailer, and then I see none of it in the final cut. What is going on? Like, and then like fucking you see the the director cuts of these movies, and you're like. Why wouldn't you release this? This would have easily made you like a billion dollars, guaranteed. Like Snyder Cut, I I have a hundred percent faith that movie would have made a billion dollars. Yeah, I don't get why they wouldn't want to release a cut like that. But what's holding them back? They they fear they fear people will not stay for the whole movie. I'm like I'm a DC fan. I got that shit tatted on my body. I'm not leaving this fucking theater until this movie's over. Well, wouldn't you just release it in a in digital? And then you know, go f- see you know, trust from there. Just well, it just it, it, it was released you, they released it in what 2018? 2021. No, uh, the original Justice. Oh, yeah, 2018. 2018, yeah, or 20. I, I, well, I don't seem to get that. One of the two. They did the Snyder Cut in 20, was it 2021 or 2020? 2021, it was February of mm-hmm. 2021, I believe. Okay. Cause, yeah, because I was like, it was still like, like COVID times. Yeah. So because what what they were doing is uh, Zach when he announced it, it was August of 2020. They were hosting a uh, a virtual live uh, uh, watch party of Man of Steel, um, mm-hmm. and then at the end, like um, Henry Cavill came on to like talk to him about it, and he's like, "Yeah, we're." He's like, "Do you want to tell him the news, Zach?" And he goes, "Yeah, we got the permission, the green light. We're gonna finish the movie. We're gonna release the Snyder cut of Zach of Justice League. I promise you, you've only seen literally thirty minutes total of my version. There's a whole movie you guys have not seen. I watched that movie. I'm like, yeah, there's this is literally a whole brand new movie. I love it. That's the only Justice mm-hmm. League I watch now. Like, I will sit there and watch it for four hours. I'm like, people, are like, you want to watch Justice League? I'm like, only for watching Zack Snyder's. Get ready. You better get your shit ready because we're about to go on a fucking journey right now. You gotta be ready for your two whole meals. Or you gotta be eating right now. Fuck you, yeah. dude. You know, I ain't gonna lie. That's probably on my Mount Rushmore of some of the greatest superhero movies ever made. What the the your, the what Justice is the League? of greatest superhero movies ever made uh in fiction, well uh, if they do really good with this flash movie yeah um, my mount Ru- my, my mount rushmore is constantly changing because there's like a no movie comes out i'm like that was fucking terrific well um, okay right. currently, what, what is out or like been released so not counting future projects currently what are, what are your top- that's not future projects it's coming in two months that's four. it's a future project that's four right? it's not a future project <laughs> Four then. So cool. number one. And I'm not gonna say that one because that one's a fucking obvious one. I, I get tired when people say that one just because of his what? performance. But I'm gonna go number one for me is the Batman. Um, uh, uh, sparkly, sparkly Batman. Yeah. No oh, emo Batman. No Matt That's Reeves. Emo. Matt Reeves fucking nailed that shit, bro. Matt Reeves yeah. brought. Matt, he did really, Matt really Reeves good. Reeves took batman comic books and just threw it on the screen i was like this is what i've been <laughs> fucking waiting for um, he made it as detective comics it's what it yeah, should be it, it was great i love that fucking movie um mm-hmm. avengers endgame because that was the best cinematic experience i've ever had and the stakes that was a whole 10-year storyline and that was the finale like i was there from the start i was going to be there at the end um mm. Zack snyder's justice league uh 100 yeah. percent and guardians of the galaxy the okay. first one? The first one. Oh. Great writing. The, the the CGI looks fucking terrific. Um direction is great from James Gunn. The uh cinematography looks phenomenal. Soundtrack is incredible. Um and I feel like with that first one, he kind of did something where it was he made every character super relatable to some like anyone who's anyone could have related to any one of those characters. You know, I've known a million Star Lords in my life. I've known a lot of fucking Draxes in my life. I know a lot of Rockets in my life, a lot of Gamoras, a lot of a lot of, you know, even though he says three words, you know a lot of Groots in your life too. You know, like you can relate to one of those characters. And the fact that you just get these band of misfits that didn't even know each other and then they came together as a group and worked. Uh yeah, that was fucking phenomenal. Wow, that's four, right? That's my four. yeah. All right, Lucio, you're up. My top four, 
would be it's gonna be I, I you might even agree with it but i was gonna say batman returns because that's been something i watched i got really into that's why i liked films it was because i watched batman returns i uh i think it's a great story i just i i have it's hard for me to watch danny devito as the penguin only because i've i'm a sunny fan and i only yeah. see him from it's always sunny so it's like I mean, I, I dig it for what it was. That was like a really, at the time, mm-hmm. comic accurate version of the Penguin. But I was like, yeah, Colin Farrell kills ah. that shit now. Yeah, yeah, well, that's true. But like that one, I actually. But I really respect it. it. It's because... a great choice. It's a Michael Keaton Batman, so I respect Good it. Choice. It's a like, Michael Keaton classic Batman. Yeah. Um, I go with Endgame, too. Endgame, Endgame is incredible. really good. It's incredible. Um, shit. What else? Um, I go with you know, I I like the I like the Batman film, Matt Reeves and the Matt Reeves and the Batman. Um, it's four, right? Yeah. So you got one more. Yeah, you got one more. <gasps> I was gonna choose one on there. I was actually gonna choose a few on there that I didn't put on the list, but I like what what my list is. But one of them I didn't put on the list, which I'll name as an honorable mention, is Iron Man because that's what started it all. That's a good one. I was gonna, I was gonna say Iron Man too, because I, I actually liked Civil War. Civil War was that bad. Civil War was a really good one. It was pretty good. I liked it. I actually liked that one because yeah. I actually liked how they were able to go, you know, against these two, these other Avengers, like that were like you know they were colliding. Well, they were gonna collide together at the eventually. That's the but they I were liked. gonna fight fight each other for these abilities you know that's that's the thing i like about the mcu they're very good at taking well-known storylines in the comics and translating them into like an mcu version like okay how is this storyline gonna fit in the mcu they figured out a way because civil war literally was the comic book except they just included mcu stuff like instead of the contract that they agreed to sign with to reveal all their identities to all our mankind so there was no like hidden identities superheroes they had the Sokovia Accords, which basically told them they couldn't be superheroes unless they agreed to these laws. And, you know, there was the one friend that, you know, well, in this one, it was Bucky trying to get him to fucking, you know, kill all the other Winter Soldiers and shit um, and unbrainwash him and stuff. But uh, you had Spider-Man in there. That was like the debut of Spider-Man, the debut of Black Panther, dude. Like, you had two great debuts mm-hmm. right there, man. And, uh, yeah, that was a fantastic film. I like the I like his entrance w- with the uh, Black Panther when he's fighting Hawkeye. Oh yeah, he goes. Uh, I'm Clint. Hawkeye. Uh, Clint. Goes, Clint. I'm Clint. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but then he remembered it in fucking Endgame. He's like Clint, give it to me. <laughs> and I was like, he remembered. Uh, See, he knows. He knows Hawkeye. He knows Hawkeye. All right, yeah. Vincent, what you got for your Mount Rushmore? I'm gonna go with. The Dark Knight. See that I. Oh fuck, I man! Every, okay, listen. Damn it! I got no, you can't. No, 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 no. That I did not know. We can put the freaking DC movies in there. You put DC movies in there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, fuck, I didn't know that. Well, that's another you DC. Put that's two like, Batman movies in there. <laughs> oh damn it! Fuck, listen, I didn't know. Well, okay, I didn't listen, know we could put. I fuck, man. That was the one I was talking about in the beginning because that's the typical one everyone goes to, and everyone praises uh, Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, as they should. It is great. Don't get me wrong. It is the see, best live-action adaptation. However, there are other great Jokers. I'm sorry to say it. Like, he was the best anarchist, but I like every Joker for every reason. See, I think... Hey, that man, the, fuck. That was really good. good that, like, <sighs> and beat is Mark Hamill in the animated series. Yeah, well, I mean, I like them all for yeah. the other reasons, but yeah, Mark Hamill for me is the GOAT. Like, there's no The Killing that. Joke is really good. That fucking the movie. Killing Joke. I looked, uh, that I looked was Kevin Conroy impressive. dead in the eyes when I met him. I'm like, Killing Joke, you and Mark Hamill. There's no other way I would rather have it done. I'm so glad you guys signed on to do that. Yeah. yeah thank you. So, I would <laughs> go The Dark Knight. I would go The Batman. Um, I would go Ragnarok. Yeah, that was. Really oh cool. yeah, that's a good one. And one of the best Thor movies, <laughs> actually. Only. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Blade. Ooh, you went back. You which one? Further. Yeah, which one? 
The first one. A lot of people oh, really talk- love yeah. Blade 2. I don't like it as much as I did the first one. I thought that it was cool because, you know, Norman Reedus was in it. But, that like... the second one. Yeah, the second one. Oh, okay. I thought you were like... Yeah, I, thought- I, I, I prefer the first one. Oh, yeah, okay. The first just, one's great. Blade first one's great. Yeah. Girl. I gotta be honest with you, though, and it, it's gonna be a little bit of controversial opinion. I kind of like the third one a lot. With Brian the, Reynolds? Yeah. The third one's Justin not as Bill. bad as, like... I, I think at the time it was bad, but like with hindsight, it's like eh, it wasn't that bad. Well, like the only thing that's bad about it is fucking what you call its performance is Dracula. Like it's a little over the top. His acting's kind of shitty, but like you got Triple H in that movie. You got fucking um, oh yeah, he was. Who else in that movie? You got a few people <laughs> in that movie, but it, it's Jessica like, Biel or Jessica. Yeah, Jessica Biel. The, the he was in the third one, right? Oh, right. Like I said, Ryan Reynolds is in that movie. Hmm. Oh, the other guy, the older guy, that um, the guy that looks like Jeff Bridges. Oh, the guy um, who Whistler. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. No, that that's not Kiefer Sutherland. He didn't play Whistler. You're thinking the no, Lost Boys now. What am I thinking? Lost Boys. He's a vampire. Okay, Lost what, Boys. what fucking island are you from, bro? That's that's who it is. Who? It's Christopherson. Oh, is that who? Oh, uh, Christopherson. That's right. Yes, Whistler. Mm-hmm. I am I'm very curious to see how they are going to do another Blade movie, honestly. Like I I'm, I'm curious about the direction they go, especially with the MCU. Like we're gonna get the supernatural side of the MCU now. Like I'm excited for that. And they got Mahersha Ali playing fucking Blade. Like I, I wouldn't have cast Mahersha anyone Ali. else. I trust it hundred percent because Mahersha Ali is fucking great. I got I got one movie for you to watch and I guarantee you that's gonna sell him on on this fucking Blade project, and that's Green Book. Green, yeah, Green Book is great. I've watched it. That's a uh, top. Well, that's where he fucking won the Oscar. Yeah. Hang on, Vincent. Yeah, you, you got to watch it. It's so fucking good. It's just his performance is just both of their out of control in that movie. Like the and his yeah, Viggo Morrison was fucking great too because yeah, he, he played this. Movie. Yeah, he played this southern like you know like guy. It was like I, I'll be honest with you, and I, I'm a, I'll. Uh, it's not really a spoiler. It's in the it's it's the end of the movie, but I love that scene at the end of the movie where like. He goes back to his house. He's like, "Hey, it's Christmas. Like, come over and you know, you can you can have some supper. You can have some supper with me and my family." And he's like, "No, I'll be good. Like, you go home to your family and stuff." And then like, he's like going home. He's getting settled in. He's a little sad. You could tell that he's bummed out that he didn't come out. And then the door rings, and it's the one person they come in. And then like, he's about to shut the door, and he looks, and he gets like super excited that he sees the doc, and and um, he comes in, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Hey, you know, come in, meet my family." And then, you know, like. It because it, it, like the, the movie also deals a lot with it, it was a social message to, sh- to show you what it was like in what I think it was like the fifties sixties, uh, mm-hmm. uh, with racism and that's really what the Green Book is all about. If anyone knows anything about the Green Book, it was literally um, a book for um, for certain ethnicities, a message. certain ethnicities to go to their own. Like back in the day, it was like color only or like you know what i mean like it was yeah. racist in, in a lot of places and you couldn't like go to bl- you know black people had to go get like their their food from the back yeah they like, had to go if, like, I, if, if i walked up somewhere like they would they'd be like yeah turn around go away yeah. i'd be like there's a spoiler for that too like there's a scene where he goes to the house and then he's after he's performing he tells he's him and his partner his band partner they are they're about to grab food and then the white the guy that the owner of the white house the that owns the house the white man Tells him like, oh, you have to go wrap back. Yeah, and then he's tell in it, uh, you know, he's talking to him and tell him like, oh, well, I mean, we just performed. I'd be what are you talking about. He goes, well, you, yeah, you he, still have to like, go he, wrap he's back. He's like, you can't eat here, and I was like, what, bro? That you know. sucks. <sighs> but like, yeah, sucks. it's 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 a great movie, and that movie alone, right there, I was when I heard he was gonna be playing Blade, I was like, I'm sold. Like, I don't care how the story. He did goes. really good in this uh, show, uh, De- True Detective. He did really good for that one. Was he in season three? Yeah, season three. Don't watch season two. It's fucking shitty. I love season it's that two. that one's the one with Vince. Season Martin. two. Yeah, I didn't really. I wasn't a fan oh, of it. Dude, I just didn't. I did not show. like. It, it didn't really. The first one, the first season is really good with Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrison. Yeah, because you could just tell from their relationship on screen and off screen that they are exactly like. Well, you know how they're they both, are. Uh, executive producers for the show, right? Even to yeah, this, even to this they, day, mm-hmm. they are. They and then they they're um they they're close. They're like 
they're they're bro- they're very very I mean, close they're friends. Hotheads. That's why they they're probably smoking weed together as they're writing. The well, show. there's a there's a there's a news article that I saw saying that they Vincent, <laughs> him hold on, hold on. Roy Vincent Harris looks like he's about to kill somebody right now. I'm just looking. Oh, you're just. Um, like, I'm just. I'm. I'm in tune to this conversation. I know it's. Just, oh, it's funny with that you're green band. Like gonna, you're gonna kill with somebody. That green man. band of yours. <laughs> I'm just hey, don't hate. Appreciate. Hey, I'm not hating, bro. I'm just like I'm just making sure you're good, you know. I'm good. Okay, now that I know. But you're there, hating. there's this, there's this like this article though that they talked about how Woody Harrison and Matthew McConaughey are bi- biologically brothers, and then they're trying to take a like a test, like a DNA test, test to make sure like this is accurate. I just, I just saw something about that, like on TikTok. Yeah. It was, like it was Woody talking about like yeah, like. We don't know for sure, but like that's hilarious. We could my we father can be brothers with his mom shortly before he was born. So uh, it's possible. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this, man. The funniest thing I heard Woody Harrelson say was on 420. Um, they're in Los Angeles, uh, or he was somewhere. I don't, I don't remember what state, but they were trying to ratify a like a bill to like legalize marijuana and whatnot. And I think uh, if you pay attention to marijuana, it's on the same. I think we talked about this too. It's on the same um, boat as like they consider it the same drug as like heroin and like LSD and shit like that. I'm like, it's nowhere near yeah. any of that. Like, if anything, mm-hmm. it's beneficial for your health, you know. So, um, you 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 see him, you know, uh, he's talking about it, and they're like, yeah, like he goes, uh, when the guy that was trying to ratify the bill, he was like, yeah, you know, I've never seen anyone OD on. Um, marijuana. I've seen everyone OD on the other drugs, but not marijuana. And then Woody Harrelson looks at him. He goes, "He goes, believe me, I've tried." <laughs> I was like, "Only leave it to Woody Harrelson to re- give that response." You know, it's like that makes sense. Yeah, yeah Woody Har- believe him. Fucking uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's a couple stoner Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. Willie Nelson. Rogan. Willie Joe Nelson. Rogan. Uh, Joey Diaz. Oh, Joey Diaz is great. Uh, uh, He's on. He's tried like a thousand milligrams of like. Isn't of, Joey Diaz in the Longest Yard? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's Someone in that, give he's me a burger and a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Let's see. He has cocksucker. Um. Yeah, but he's he's like that. But he he got in, uh, Woody Harrison got in trouble recently for a couple like a month or two ago because he was on SNL and he's talking about how. I think something about the, like the vaccines or something like that. He was like against it and people were giving him shit over it. I was like, I, I don't know how much the story, but it was, it was a stupid controversial thing. I was like, was just, you guys are fucking just, just, you guys are looking for fucking false narratives. <laughs> you just see, I almost fell on camera right now. Yeah, I did. I saw that. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to say like, anything. I was but... like, is no one going to acknowledge that at all? Like, we, just we, we tried to let you play it off, but you added yeah. yourself. No, like, I, you, I, you, I intended you to the do subject. that. I was waiting for one of you to laugh or say something. So I was just like, well, I'm just going to fucking say it then. Like, it's already <laughs> on camera. Everyone who's <laughs> watching this We're is going to look at that. We just roll with it. <laughs> I know, but everyone on camera is going to be like, this time frame is where he falls. And it's like, yeah, it is what it is. Make a meme out of it. That'd be great. At 30 points. So it was funny actually today. Speaking of going Anthony viral, Fowl. I so I work at a high school, right? And I'm a, I'm a custodian at a high school and uh, ironically my old high school. Um so uh let's just say we have a lot of fights throughout the year, okay? And we're very short staffed on a lot of people, security, custodial, all that shit. So, um, there was a huge fight like last Friday. Sounds like knots. Yeah. No, it, 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 oh, it's this is Edgar Central. Okay. I'm just saying that right now. Um I, I won't lie though, there's a lot of I, I talk to a lot of the kids. There's a lot of great kids out there. I think I think honestly, and this is my honest opinion, more kids just need to be heard. Um and they need they need topics that you can relate to with them. Um, because I, I talk a wide variety of things with kids and, um, it makes my, it makes my day when I'm, when I can make a kid laugh or, or just have a positive mindset. Cause you know, they're, you don't know, you never know what they're going through, you know? So make sure to talk to people cause you never know what they're going through. Uh, anyway, that's not the point of this story though. Um, so I'm walking and, and I hear on the radio 415, which is the code for a fight at our school. Um, mm-hmm. So I run, I, I drive over there quick with my freaking car. I get off and I'm walking across fucking 
uh, senior square, and I'm just like, this is BS, bro. On a Friday, we got to fill out paperwork. I hate this. I'm walking, and there's a group of people around him. I shoved through like I it was my number for the Royal Rumble, bro. And I shoved <laughs> through people, and I freaking was like, get out of the way. Dude, like, it, you could just see, like, I uh, so I broke up the fight. I helped break up the fight and stuff. I, I, I'm driving the hallways today during during school, and they go, Mr., you're on World Star Hip Hop. You're going viral. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they're like, <laughs> that fight from last week, you broke it up. You're going viral. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers put that shit on World Star? I'm like, did you at least tag my channel on it so they can come subscribe <laughs> afterwards? Or Like, if I'm going to be put on a thing and go viral, I at least want to promote my company. It's not the best way to promote yeah. my company, but advertising hey, is man. advertisement. That's Imagine amazing. you were like the f- you were viral. You were like famously just became this famous public figure By for the just way, a for viral those, fight. For all those who are wondering, no, I would not really do that. I don't even condone them posting fights on the internet. I think it's fucking stupid and wrong. And yeah, but I was just laughing because they said that to me today, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "I go viral for World Star get breaking up a fight, but I can't go viral for fucking making a haunt video." I hope I hope that like the title was like giant breaks up fight between. Well, I, apparently in the in the fight you could see like, cause I am dude like, I'm not even lying. I I've broken up I, at least I've broken up at least six fights this year. I really hope that it's like a full like just the two people are in the frame and then it's you and it's just like cuts off at your chest and you just like grab both of them by the by the collars of their shirts and just hold them up and be like it was it it was uh, it was women so you got to be extremely careful the way you break up those fights oh those ones when they pull those hair i'm super careful when i break up those fights i don't even touch them i just i i literally do this and they get fucking scared and start moving back and i'm like stop I'm not fucking doing this today. Stop. You, it's and, over. You won. It's done. <laughs> it's over. Imagine in a world where we could just, we can break up fights. If so, if like you're bringing up Stop. two women, you can pretend, you can pretend like you, you're just slapping them and then they just fall over like it's wrestling. It's like, woo! Take a bop. Woo! Um, <laughs> Yeah, oh wait! So you mean to tell me that you went viral because you came out of nowhere and hit the RKO? Bro, I wish that was, I wish that was what I went viral for. But like, it was funny because there was one security guard. She, he had one like strapped down on the floor because like she was going nuts. My my coworker had fucking one over there with one of the teachers. I grabbed the other one over there, fucking backed her up over there. So she got, and then one of the other teachers got her up to the office. It was just so anyway. Uh, the, fr- the the fight before that, or like two fights before that, that I broke up, one of the girls literally was like, she was putting up her statement. She was like, I don't remember. All I remember was this tall guy that looked like Michael Myers just picked me up and freaking put me over there. And I was like, she called me Michael Myers? That was the sweetest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and then I and then I confronted that girl. I'm like, wait, aren't you? Because she was in the office one day. I'm like, aren't you the girl that called me Michael Myers? She's like. Mister, how'd you find out about that? I'm like, I have eyes and ears everywhere around this school. <laughs> I'm the custodian, bro. Have you ever seen Breakfast Club? I listen to your conversations. You guys don't know it, but I do. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I do. I love, I love uh, seeing fights. The best fights I've seen is probably the the downtown Fulton fights at 2 a.m. The downtown Fulton fights are the best ones because yeah. you they are in the middle of the street. They're anywhere. They're in the middle of the street behind a trash can, still in the club, still fighting each other, or they're like near the train, like they're on the train rack. And they're like fighting each other too. Yeah, like doing a bunch of shit. And then, but like th- then there's like a bunch of them will come by. Well, like that's the thing. Like I think <laughs> I don't know if it still exists to this day because I I haven't been to downtown Fulton in a while. But there, there's still people that fight each other at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I don't know why. Like those 2 a.m. drunk fights. I got into a fight at Fulton once. <laughs> One time. <laughs> How'd that go? I, uh, <laughs> didn't go that well. It was actually kind of embarrassing, actually. <laughs> it was a well. years, year, years ago. Years I ago. Was, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> no. It was like almost anyway, a decade ago. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the podcast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It was a decade ago, and it was this girl that I was with during the time, and I, it was just, we weren't, like, we had, like, a little fight one night, and then we were both, like, you know, drinking a lot, or drinking, like, we were just drinking to it, but we just got intoxicated, and then 
um, I saw her. She was she was talking to a friend. I didn't. Well, I didn't know that was a friend. And she was. It reminds she me hugged. of the song a little bit. Hold on. It reminds me of the song a little bit. It goes, have you ever met a girl that you tried to date, but a year to make love? She wanted you to wait. No. Okay. Keep going. No, no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I, so we, she was hugging this guy and then I looked and I went up to him and I pushed him away. I was like, what the fuck you doing? God. And then, um, I guess we were just like arguing and then. All I can remember is is that we were both choking each other. So we were like, my hand was on his neck and his his hand was on my neck. And we were just like choking each other back and forth. What are you guys, <laughs> then, Undertaker and Kane? Like someone chokes no, slam somebody already. Just, Fuck. Yeah. Um, we I, I'd choking. be that one guy right there be like, fucking choke slam somebody already. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, we were doing it all at the same time, though. We were just choking each other. Then it just the the. The fight broke out. It was the most embarrassing fight ever, ever I've been to. But yeah, I I hate fights like that. Fights at haunts are really cool too. Have you seen fights at haunt? I have There's never something. seen. I've never seen a fight oh. with two actors like on a real not level. two actors like on a no, real level. Not. Like because I don't think that ever really happens. Like if anyone has an issue with anyone, they just kind of do their own thing. They go the other direction. But yeah, there might have been. They hide behind social media and just start drama yeah. you go backstage <laughs> right. and talk about that you go behind a2 and you talk about that shit and tell them like you verbally argue each other and tell them like well you were sleeping with my girlfriend it's like well that I was no bro i'm on the other <laughs> side of the fence man i'm fucking i'm i'm the yeah. guest man i'm the i'm the guy i do the thing with the camera you know that's all <laughs> i do i just you know um... the, the silliest shit that they fucking get mad about they're like oh my god he used to do this like three years ago and he used to he he flirt with me and now I fucking hate him. Like shut the fuck up, dude. My, my goddamn favorite, wife. My favorite um, are the people who are like, I did that like five years ago and now he's doing it. So he stole it from me. <laughs> like, Don't like, fucking like, get it. I just started working like la like last year. Like, what did I steal? Like <laughs> Yeah, they're like, Well, I had this idea three years ago and he's doing it now. Well, I'm like, well, well, you didn't did you perform it now? <laughs> You should have performed three years I'll be ago. Honest though, I have a, I have a video coming out pretty soon that I know no one has an idea that no one has made, and I'm and I'm hoping that a lot of people like it. Um, and it's probably already out already, so I'll fucking say it. Um, Evil Dead and Horror Hotel comparisons of how Horror Hotel was supposed to be Evil Dead Rise, and I literally break down the trailer, I break down some scenes, and I break down the maze. And Are I you talking about the Horror Nights maze? Yeah. Mm. I'm not gonna say anything, but. I have. I already know it was, after watching Evil Dead Rise. That just confirmed it for me. That was supposed. I mean, uh, and it's 2022, so it's like it is what it is. It already the gear already passed. the 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 property was already scrapped. Like everything that I seen What's in Evil Dead Rise was supposed to be Horror Hotel, or everything I saw in Horror Hotel was supposed to be Evil Dead Rise. I I I know it for a fucking fact, bro. Every fucking thing I saw in Evil Dead Rise easily could have been in Horror Hotel. Wait, so what does this do about fighting? <laughs> I don't know how we got on this. I'm just talking about Evil Dead. Um, oh. I do got. I do have a story though. I have a funny story. Actually, oh no, because also... you were talking about stealing things, and you're like, I just got here. Oh, like, oh I have a video okay. idea that okay. no one has thought done yet, and I literally. Now Vince is like, yeah. oh, you know, and uh, now he's putting me down on my video, and I'm like, do I even want to finish editing it now? Because I'm already halfway done. <laughs> oh, finish it. Yeah. Um, you may not be onto something. I know I'm onto fucking something. I'm not an idiot, bro. I fucking know. You know. I think with a guy like you that's done it for so long, it's but, just, I mean, you, that knows you, the spoilers. I mean, have, you, have, I mean any, I understand. have any of you seen Evil but, Dead Rise yet or no? Yeah. No, I haven't. Oh, okay. You told well, me about it. Go watch Evil Dead Rise, especially you, Vincent, because I know you go to fucking Horror Nights every year. Go watch Evil Dead Rise and don't tell me that wasn't supposed to be horror. That wasn't supposed to be where Ho Hotel was at. Well, you know, it's not like I help create some of the stuff for. I horror know Nights, what but... you do. <laughs> Are you creating stuff for? That being knots? said, I don't know if you can for say it, and if you can, if yeah. Knots purchases stuff from Immortal. They used to. Um, back when uh when john cook was kind of like the head of everything at not so like three three or four years ago um they bought a lot of stuff from immortal 
um, like a lot of them, uh, the Cthulhu is in the depths. Um, a couple of the the clowns oh, like in Dark Side. Dark Side's um, no more. Yeah, sadly, no more chair. No more clown. No, no more, more clown. chair. Best, best monster at knots. No more clown hell. I miss. Well, clown there hell. was. I, I so badly just wanted to fucking scare in clown hell just one night just to just play in there just clown hell so and dark ride is so fucking fun i can't i i i just can't imagine how much fun we had when so when i went just rub it in my face the, the first time go yeah go ahead rub it in my face hey, it makes you feel any better i didn't get to scare no. in clown hell either yeah, yeah. but you got to scare well, in special I, ops and that's something else i, I would have loved to do for a night so when, uh, when i got to scare in clown hell for the first time it was me the, Vin, uh, sorry, I was gonna say Vincent. Sorry, uh, me, oh, Chris, Liar. Chris, Chris Pena, which is uh, Chris Pena is the monkey, one of the monkeys, monkey, and then um, I think it was Booster that got to scare it's too. Boost man, yeah. So we got the scare in there, and then do we were it, it was just so fucking fun. Just like me, we were. It's just a fun way to fuck around, and then you're you go to every single spot, and you're drenching sweat. It's hot as hell. And then me and Chris, we were we were actually like we were at near the exit, and on top of the stage where Clown Hell is at, like right where this little the seat main, is, like right in the, the main stage. Yeah. So we got to sit, we got we we're standing right there, and we were looking at you like, what do we do? What do we do? And then Chris starts doing this <laughs> luau dance, and I just, I just went with it too. So we we're just going like this back and forth near the exit as people were leaving, and people were laughing. And then after we will do it for like a few seconds, and we'll scare somebody, and then we'll go back into doing it. We're just <laughs> it just right. the stupidest shit. shit. And then I was slide we the slide on uh, near the exit too. I will go sliding down the there. Way. Yeah, and then um. There's so much shit. Now, was that do. planned or was that just something that just happened that day on the spot? You're like, let's just fucking do it. Uh, to go on uh, dark ride. Yeah. No, they were. They they told us. They told us that. Well, they told us that day. Then they actually had a set. So the our our cast lead had a set schedule to have people on certain days. So like, hey, can you come by on? Uh, which day do you want to do it? Can you you want to do it next week or you want to do it this week? Okay, you want to do it this? Uh, you want to do it this Friday, Saturday, or Sunday? Then pick a time, do it an hour, and you get you leave. Hmm. But like yeah, the, they they had we had we had we don't have to we wanted to have like you know to go in there because like people were raving about it. people in in the break room like dude you gotta try dark right you gotta go in the you gotta go at clown hell it's so fucking fun go in there even in the neon scene that the, what the skeletons are go in there and just in um fuck around it's actually so it's so fun you get a fucking sweat out of it for sure but it's fun and um if you love mazes i mean if you've done mazes for so long I mean, and you got into streets and you got to go back in there. It's kind of like this little nostalgia for you. So it's, and, but like I had a lot of fun, especially like for me coming from a, being in streets for so long and going there yeah, and scaring been, and realizing what you've never been in a maze, right? I never been. A, well, that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm well, trying I guess to say. Like, like, your, your guest appearances. Basically, yeah. Lucille, so basically Lucio is saying he's better than all of you. I'm no, kidding. I'm not I'm saying. Kidding. Kidding. I'm kidding. Calm down. Calm down. You're gonna kidding. create so many problems for him. He's yeah. not. He's not. I'm in through already out of the problems. God damn, guys, please. I'm just kidding. That was that was me saying that. Um, no, I'm I'm saying what I'm trying to um say is that is that I've I've been for being in the streets for so long, and the when I started to like now, and going in there and scaring. I give so I've I've had so much more up respect to people that work in mazes now. I mean during that during that time it was just like I had so much more respect for them because it's such a hard job to do. Oh, you yeah. got it. You're 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 in you're in constant in one spot or in one room and you're scaring in that room for 
an hour or two and there's no like during and then you gotta think like during the time when there wasn't an a cast and b cast so you gotta you're in there for a few hours and god knows when you get a break and i feel like we get it we for people in the streets we get it so we're we're giving it so easy is that we can walk we can walk away from that field our zone in any time to catch a breath to like grab grab a get a break get a sip grab of water. water yeah sip of water these people just don't seem to have that very well they have to like i mean they what they go into one little room and they can catch a breath for like a second then go out but like they're still in this one circle like this one maze i i just don't respect they have, that uh, like 45 on 45 off kind of deal or yeah but that that's the, like it, it's but uh, that 45 minutes doing that it's so it's it's work it's yeah. a lot of work you're doing a lot of physical a lot of cardio no, no, work. And i'm not saying that's an excuse i just i didn't know how their break schedule worked it was 45 on 45 off i don't know i think it's like 45 yeah. an hour yeah it's like an one hour off one hour on yeah hour on hour off yeah but i, I think now that, they're doing that from what i've but you got to think that, it's not... that hour Go goes by like that <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> You're like, what? I just sat down. <laughs> well, yeah, like when, I, when infected, we didn't we didn't get hour on hour off. Infected was the only maze to not do that. Uh, we because just because it was like it was such a different type of maze, and like we constantly needed people in that maze. We uh, only got like the normal two fifteens and a thirty. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. I like how they're just doing that for mazes and they're only doing that for this one scare zone in Goring 20s because just because how small the zone is and how many how much in a cast mm -hmm. and they're not they were there was rumors that were going to do you know for Ghost Town and Carnival to have a, a cast and B cast it didn't fucking make sense I was like you guys are you guys realize that how much we have and how big the zone is for for Carnival and Ghost Town you like, why would you guys want it? Like, there were, I never heard a rumor about that during the time. It just didn't make sense to me. Why would they want to implement that? I, it, it, it never made sense to me. And I think it kind of died in, in like this. The reason why it kind of died is like you need coverage. And like, like Ghost Town and Carnival are the two biggest areas in the park. And like, as a guest, you can tell when there's not a lot of monsters out. No. But in, I mean, even even as a monster, you know, like I think this was like one of the first years where it was like, wow, like the monsters actually outnumber the guests, as opposed yeah. to, like, you know what I mean? Like when you, you talk about this past way, season, when you say it that yeah, way, it sounds this, really it is sad. Past, it, it it is is it it is unfortunate in some ways because we got to think like, you know, you guys talked about it with with, with Aaron, is that like how what what could change and this haunt world that we mm -hmm. could do is that i you know ever since this whole chaperone policy came into place and it actually it was it was implemented in uh during ghost town live because vi talked about in my podcast how it started and he thinks that you know that happened and then it's gonna you know it transferred to haunt and then thinking like haunt is going to be less and more of a risk and then than doing spooky farm so like there's you could see the difference between spooky farm having more of an audience than people are haunt because it's it just crazy because i remember pulling up to knots like for for haunt this past season and there were just tons and tons of people leaving leaving knots that were leaving spooky farm and I was like, dude, if we could have half of you guys here for for one night of Scary Farm, that would make it like a hundred times better. Because of that policy being, being, you know, stated that they only wanted, you know, what they had to have, like, if you bring five people in, you get a ticket for free. And then like people that are like 21, the 21 and over had to have people that were like, you know, uh, was it underage or like 18 or 17 uh younger i don't even know what the policy is now like it's just like that's it, it it's so unfortunate and then that's that's what i didn't get is that you you guys didn't 
want to just take a risk and drop the policy and you know like you had security you guys had a bunch of security actually you had more security than i thought you had pol- you actually had police actually surrounded in each zone yeah at least like two policemen hanging around there and it's that that was just an unfortunate thing i just didn't like to see it's like when and then being twenty five thousand, like the strongest crowd that we had and you see these rookies getting all excited like oh my god it's gonna be like it's the biggest night ever i'm like shut the fuck up i'm like have you not seen forty thousand a crowd you you talk to me when no, shut the fuck up. You don't know what the fuck. Yeah, have you not seen a 40,000 crowd? Talk to fucking Aaron. Talk to yeah, these other guys that have been through around here. It's called Halloween Horror Nights. Didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah, the scary the scariest part of Horror Nights is the freaking line that you wait in to get into the maze. That's oh, I'm sorry, the house. Song. No, it's maze. The house. I don't care, it's maze. The oh and horror California nights? Yeah, that's always a fuck. use the term maze, it's maze. Sorry. The um, you're not gonna whore, change my, you're not, nights? You're, yeah, they, they call them houses now because Orlando has always called them houses, and they think we're weird over here for calling them mazes. Um, but it's but, like it's a very east coast thing, it's like an east coast and like midwest thing to call like a haunted, a haunted, house. House, a haunted house, yeah. But like to me, like, I don't know, I because I, I talk about this with, with people at work, and I'm like, to me, it's a maze. I was like, it's a house if it's a house. Any, any, if you are doing like a warehouse maze or like a corn or like a farm maze or like you just have this massive thing, it's a maze. It's an attraction that you're going to and you're walking through a maze. It, to me, it's only a house if like it's, it's truly is like a haunted house. Like, all right, like, uh, you know, if you wanted to call something like, like I would, uh, if, like if something was like a mansion themed thing, right? And like that was the whole attraction was all right, cool, I'm gonna go to to like McKinley Manor or whatever. Like that that's a haunted house. It's it I I know that like I'm pulling things out, but like that was the only name that popped into my head. But like that's a haunted house. That's not a maze. A maze is you know, you know what I mean. I would say a maze like, it's a building house. The way I, I've house? always, because I've had the argument too, people are like, well, maze is like something you can't get out of. It's like, you know, you go through this maze and you got to try to find your way out. I'm like, it can be that, but also a maze is something that is also can be built. And literally you're walking through a flow through of a maze looking at different scenes of stuff. And it's a controlled environment maze where they literally have a, a way out for you. So you're yeah. literally walking through an entrance to get to an exit, which, in my opinion, is a maze. I don't know. It's a corridor. Yeah. Let's call them haunted corridors. Does haunted mean, hallways. Is this, is this a new fucking term? We can... Yeah, we're, we're coining it. You heard it here first. The ultimate, the next haunted hallway that was announced at Knott's today. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Dark Room, where you go in the dark straight ahead. <laughs> Oh, Will you exit? Hey, I don't know. Hey, hey, unlike Knott's, we don't steal things from other theme parks. Yeah, See you in the fog. Know. Yeah, I, I have. I a, thought that was actually kind of funny how they people a lot, lot I of it was like funny of how you got mad about it. I'll tell you. I'll tell yeah. you off camera uh, what the the deal is be- like behind that whole thing. Yeah, not so <laughs> I I thought it was funny. Yeah, like how Anthony said, like people overreact is so like mad about it like you guys are swear i'm like i get it like it is not this thing and yeah that's that's stupid that they couldn't come up with their own shit but i'm sorry to say it boys they're the premier haunt now and they can literally well it wasn't trademark they can trademark so that's what either so they literally do whatever the fuck they want there's a sad reality of it but they can literally do whatever they want and people will still show up to their event there's plenty of things that are not trademark and I know one thing that's not trademark. Okay, well, let's not I have to tell you on camera. Let's, let's... I have to tell you guys off camera. I'm telling you that this 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 team won't be that lasting long. <laughs> I just I would just say you I'm just gonna say much. that. You said too much. I'm just saying that this is this is not okay. We're done. We're done. We're good. Yeah, I'll shut up. <laughs> we're moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, uh, I'm trying to get me canceled, huh? It's like, hey, let's get this fucking guy canceled. Oh, no. No. Canceling is not that bad. You just go away for a few months and you come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know? my God. You're going to.
you're getting yourself canceled all over again. You know that, right? Talk to me about it. You know, well, uh, I'll get you to success. Yeah. Let's just, uh, let's just not. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey guys um no um i think i i really hope that they do something different this year with with knots you know or should, i hope the the policy gets uh drops when haunt gets around this 50th because i feel like they really need it at this point they really need to drop that kind of policy and just let let it take a risk and let this 50th be like the 50th this should be how how exciting and compelling it is and you know it's going to be the biggest event too and they really should really should have that brought i mean drop that and let let haunt be the way it is like not should be the not what it should be because yeah i just i miss that crowd i really do i miss that like that that 30 plus crowd 30,000 crowd because it's those were like the the most solid nights where you just are working and I I can't imagine enough just you know being around with you know even working with your friends like me and Aaron and Vi and Wyatt working and doing those kind of nights and it being so fucking motivating and then um and even working with adam like doing those nights like 30 like a 30 plus crowd and we're just rump hammering through all those guests even monsters monsters will get out of the way for us you know that's that's like those nights like i just love and then and you see uh and you got this it's even stepping on the sideline at at, at forty thousand crowd or sixty thousand crowd and just going like okay what can I do? Like, can I go through this crowd easily or can I not, you know, but, um, I, I don't know. It's just like, those nights are just, just so, those are the funnest nights. And so, um, memorable, memorable. look at memorable. Bull, bull. Um, so I think this week was special in the sense that, uh, and we didn't plan this until, um, I think last week when I came to go film at your podcast, um, mm -hmm. but it happened to be that we were going to release, you were going to release LS3 and I was going to release shoot the shit the same week, this episode. So, I mean, that was cool. I mean, I'm glad we got to do that kind of like whole kind of like week long. You release yours, I release mine. And it's like, two, yeah, it's almost, it's, it really is two different podcasts. I don't think we really repeated too much stuff on randomly it. just synced in. Yeah. We just needed to plan it. We were just like, all right, let's just do it. Yeah. Podcast. I like doing those. Yeah. I like doing that. I like, I like supporting my friends are just doing these, you know, successful, you know, upcoming successful podcasts. Like I do it with the oars. I do it with others. And, and, um, I try to support it as much as I can. I just, you know, you know, the, I, I love bringing, and now the fact that I'm, I'm supporting others now out of my, out of this branch of, of, you know, haunt in the haunt community. And I just released this one episode recently with my cousin, uh, he and his band partner Mick, they're in this uh, band called The Dunce, and they're like a, a alternative hip hop band. And then the and then they are they have a background on metal music. They've been in metal bands for like for thirty years, and then now they're doing this. Yeah, they're doing this now. And then I'm I'm I I I've uh, known my cousin Johnny for I mean I was close to them for a while. You know, for I've I've hung out with him. I used to go to his old house, like when I was after when I was in middle school. I used to go there a lot, hang out with him, his brothers, and um, I I used to see him at shows when he was in uh, these different metal bands like Vulgar and um, these these other ones too. I, Vulgar was the other the main one, but the other ones I've seen like pictures and videos of him, and then. Um, and but he's like I, I like it and then also he was in the he was kind of part of like he did a little bit of haunt too he was in his brother isaac made this haunted like this maze called the rizzo scare house it was a haunted it was a it was a home haunt and he built it it started from his uh, their garage and now 
it grew well i don't know now they they want to bring it back soon but like during a time like a few years ago they brought it to like this huge you know maze that their house that was their they made it for their house like it was like a the way they created the maze was pretty impressive and they brought it to scarlet they brought it to scarlet during a time and they brought it to midsummer scream and he talks about how like that like people raved about it too and he, and it, it's and then it was so simple it was all like black tarp and they were doing like these aggressive scares and um then yeah it's just it, it, it's i like promoting those kind of you know people like just like my those kind of friends you just support at they are you know family members you know just, i'm trying to and i'm trying to branch out as much as i can too as far as doing you know music artists like other other people that do these other different types of art you know i i i love i love like supporting that i'm trying to challenge myself in that too it's challenge it's yourself. difficult it's difficult because like i i i i'm not fully experienced as far as like music mm -hmm. but i can do i mean i can know very little bit for sure but i'm a curious person i love to like know like well what got you into creating this kind of song or what's the process of creating music right. i asked my i mean like i like i said i asked during that the episode i said what's have you guys made you know have you guys created lyrics that were too personal for you and mick was like yeah we created music we've i've done one and it, it was just i had to put it to the side because I, I couldn't i i didn't want to place it it was just going to be too it was going to hit me too much personally mm -hmm. and there was once like he made like they 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 made one for it was called thick it was he my cousin johnny said that it was pr really too personal for him and that was about like body positive uh it was talking about body positivity and it, it's um like those things i just love being curious about those yeah. like i asked anthony too like i asked you i, I asked you anthony like that because you're you're kind of like though you talk about hi you're a little different too it's like you're a podcaster you all you create youtube you're not so much of a scare actor but you know you understand of it you know understand the element of it i have an idea of what the business is like you do and i, I asked you for more podcasting like creating content stuff i asked you like well uh when you make you know when you when you see something in the news like breaking news for like any kind of haunt event like how do you create that how does that work do you guys talk about your friends about it that that friends that create content like that like you guys you know you talked about it you talked about how you have a group chat about it yeah i got a group chat uh, a bunch of the boo bros everybody knows who they are on this channel uh you should mm -hmm. but yeah we have we just talk about it and then it's always it's not a race but to me i always look at it as, as the race as to who's going to release their video first because it's usually always like that i'm the type of guy now where like i used to be that way but now it's like I'd rather focus on putting in quality. I'm not saying they don't put in quality because a lot of people are just faster. And not, not only that, I, I have a lot of stuff I do throughout the week. Like my I, my week goes like the same every way. It's like Monday, it's like film, record, and, and fucking like edit. And then Tuesday, we stream. Wednesday, we usually edit or film. Um, and Thursday, usually we record shoot the shit or we take a week off depending on how we're all feeling. And then, you know, we go from there and, and stuff. But. Uh, next week's gonna be a little chaotic for me i mean i got a lot of stuff already fucking planned that's good though i mean that's what you want to do like i have to do like for me i'm kind of set with with all i have two weeks worth of content well no i have one week it's me worth and then um then i have to plan for the 50th episode and i have to bring and i'm already thinking about two guests i want to bring on and uh not bring on at the same time but i'm thinking about two guests i want to bring like i'm having options for those two and depending on what their schedule is like and if i could bring but like one typical guest i want to bring on if that person could come on um to me on their schedule then it'd be a really good one and that one i i think if if that does if it's going quorum plan if it does work out I think that one will be a really good episode for for haunt fans especially because 
if they see this person and they go, oh, yeah, I've known this guy for, you know, a while back. You know, like I used to, I used to see him scare a while back. And then, um, yeah, I, I won't give too much of it, but I would love to, I would love to have him on. I just haven't got to ask yet. <laughs> ask but you shall receive. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I like that. I like, I just, uh, you know, that's, that's coming up for, for sure. As far as like content and all that. But. And as far as that goes, it's a good segue. As far as that goes, where can people find the LS3 podcast? That can be fine at all major platforms. So you go on my link tree on R-U-F-F-E-O-4. That's my Instagram uh, handle. And you can click the link there and it will, uh, uh, all the platforms will be on there. It's Google, Spotify, Apple. I post a couple uh, TikTok clips on there. I just posted one recently with uh, Elijah talking about Joey Bryan. And that was a really good one. And I'll have one this week with the Dunce and uh, with other former po- uh, people that would be on the episode. So like around with like with you guys around and um, then, yeah, you can post it on there. I'm trying to get to YouTube soon. I I'm really want to. I I don't know how that we could need, work. Maybe you can. Need maybe, maybe I could teach what? you some stuff. I was gonna say we need to get you two webcams and then fucking uh, I'll teach you OBS. Yeah, I I like I I want to do. I I really wanted to get to video, and then that's the thing is that with viral videos, like you do it very well. You've done it. You you kind of you've uh. Well, I mean, for me, it was you. You really worked on it for for very long. Well, yeah, for and, me, it was like um, we were on we were doing video up until mid twenty twenty, and during the pandemic, I uh, quickly started learning more about Anchor, and that's when I jumped on and oh no, I think it was during like twenty nineteen, end of twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty, I learned about Anchor, and we did Anchor and. Then I started back cataloging some of uh, old episodes to put on the um, for Anchor and stuff. Not all episodes of My Last Four Podcast are up there, but most of them are. Uh, but I think every episode of Shoot the Shit is on uh, on on, on Spotify, Anchor on Anchor and Spotify, all that stuff. Well, now it's Spotify for podcasting, so Spotify bought out Anchor. So um, yeah, it's uh, Spotify. Bo- oh, they did. Yeah, they bought them out. Oh, wow. um, I didn't know that. So. Yeah, it's it's been a journey. We've been we we started with audio only, then we went and then we moved to video podcasting, um, and then we did video and audio. Uh, matter of fact, because I was super, my computer was giving me so much issues with the last episode. I had so many people hit me up because they were pissed off that it wasn't on uh, digital or on audio yet, and uh, I think <laughs> I, I think I finally put it up yesterday or the day before. But I was like, yeah, I, I I was lagging on it, but at the same time, my computer at the time when I was trying to get the audio file was just fucking giving me problems. So. Yeah, the the one I use is uh, Budsprout, and I um that that allows me to post like a lot of my audio. I mean, that's all I do audio uh content on there, so I could just yeah. post that. But I, I I'm but the, the, I would I would love to go on uh YouTube though transition to that, but I just haven't figured out how to do it. It's just these little things that I mean I've done it over a year now, and I'm still learning a lot of these different uh different tools to for podcasting where Mm -hmm. i've like i get so i get really angry at myself at the end of it i'm like fuck man i could have learned this about a year ago but then again like we are very we're not audio engineers we don't have a degree over that or else we would have we would uh, recognize this like a year ago or you would recognize this in 2018 we would recognize that while back but like for us we're just in the low level of learning uh, podcasting and we're slowly getting up to there. For you, you know about it a lot more than I do, for sure, uh, Anthony. And like me, I'm just learning the basic. I'm hell. Like my freaking like my mics are USBs. They're not like you know dynamic mics like you have. <laughs> like I'm learning a bunch of these shit, and I'm still like you know how to connect it or how to like. I just talked about it with you, uh, Anthony, recently, and I said like how my audio the audio of it on each mic i didn't learn about it like i didn't know i i found out on i was listening to like an old episode when he first anthony first came on and 
I was listening to it and you can hear Anthony from the like he he's he's talking on the mic, but the fact the thing is the mic's not on. So <laughs> while it's recording, so you hear me only talking, but you can hear him like it like if as if he's in the back, the background <laughs> of it. And so but you hear me fucking breathing hard and shit, like you know like <laughs> <laughs> have you a drink of water it, you sound yeah, like you sound like 2019 sammy yeah i'm like <gasps> <laughs> um but like i i i it was like i learned that those little like different things like i, I did not know about i can and i learned it fresh just simply off youtube and uh so i'm i'm learning just as i go uh um hell like i mean who knows over the past few months i'll i'll be upgrading to something and like especially with thumbnails like when i'm promoting like i have different i love doing those still like thumbnail pictures now yeah Mm -hmm. it's embarrassing to tell people to tell them like hey i'm gonna take a picture of you you have to pretend like you're talking they're like oh oh (laughs) heavens you know they're like "Eh." and then um it's weird but i i i and then i have to ask him i'm like hey it could be really weird but can you do it for me <laughs> you know you have to take a picture of me and uh it, it, like yeah it just it's things like that i'm just still learning about but I'm, I'm glad that i'm doing it i'm glad that it's i'm learning as i go and i'm learning from you i'm learning from you anthony too i really appreciate because you you got me really into my feet wet from doing podcasting yeah when we were you, no, when you brought mean, me I, on I, and- I remember the the birth of the idea of ls3 and yeah look where it's at now <laughs> yeah look at it's at now. 50 like, episodes yeah i didn't know it was gonna be up to 50 of the episodes i know 50 my, episodes. My, my goal after shoot the shit uh ends for this season is to uh work on getting miles for podcast to 200 episodes i think we're on like a one i could check for you right now actually i don't know what episode we're on but we are getting close to the big uh 200 I believe our last episode we did was with Glow for Character Appreciation Month. Um, yeah. Which was number... Let's see. This was number 188, so I have 12 more to go. Shit, so you have to do 12 more of Mindless Whore. I mean, sorry, shoot the shit? Mindless Whore. Or you just have to do 12... Oh. I, I need to oh. count how many shoot the shit episodes we've done total. That way we can, if we have to celebrate milestones, we can... Do you do you put the the content that you put for like uh, breaking news or v- events happening? Do you create those as like episodes? You put those as episodes, like so the one they talked about with uh, with Evil Dev versus the Horror Hotel. Do you put that as um, not necessarily like that? It's just it would just be its own thing, kind of its own video. Um, the series okay. that I I keep up with throughout the the year from when we get news and stuff is uh, just the Haunt updates. Um, and that usually varies by title every year. So every year I just put haunt 2023 update part one or not or episode one. And then like you'll get various episodes of that throughout the season to kind of keep you guys updated and whatnot. And then everything else, like if I film for like a convention or like an event or something, it's just its own video. Um, I, I do try to put a lot of the videos in playlists, so they're a lot easier to locate. So if like you want to just watch Halloween Horror Nights stuff, I have a whole playlist of just Halloween Horror Nights videos from the past and like speculations, oh. fucking announcements. Uh, it's like uh, on a playlist. Oh, it's on a yeah, playlist on, a play- on I got, YouTube. I got a whole Knots playlist from when we covered Knots and all the things we've done with Knots. Um, LA mm. Hayride. I have a lot of playlists. Um, Miles Moore Podcast has a playlist. Shoot the Shit has a playlist. So They actually recently just started naming the playlist. Um, like next to Miles Moore and Shoot the Shit, they literally call them podcast playlists now. So that's pretty mm. cool in my opinion i like those um, uh, those scare actor appreciation months though that you can learn from a, a person's ability what they were experiencing like in at, at the first year of doing mazes or doing you know a scare zone uh like i was i never we didn't talk we didn't get to talk much about it from the last time i was on right but when we when we talked about carnival i was I was still processing everything, what was going on. Uh, it was kind of still, like, even though it was like the second to last week, I was still kind of like, it wasn't still running through my head that this was like a, 
it was it was a big thing for sure but i didn't realize that i was like oh shit this is like something that i love that i was I actually had a very great time with it was one of the maybe one top my great seasons and um 100 it was just the fact that like i think the the whole recognition i got and the 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 amount the amount of fun that i get to do the more i think the more freedom that i get to do it, I I could I went to sort of this be, being funny of a fucking person <laughs> out there because I could do so many dumb funny shit but actually scare people in a very menacing way. Oh, and yeah, I've, I've seen that many times. I'm Vincent yeah. seen that many times. Vincent trained under you one year, didn't he? Well, the the in 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 Carnival, I was well, uh, same, but. And ghost sound like I like I could I could do like it was all just like crazy insane nonstop. Like I, I was doing that nonstop and fucking I believe it. <laughs> and I, I I don't know. I feel like I, I was just going to it was a it was a crazy character I had, but it was a lot of like a lot of work and but this one I just felt more um free. I can do more different things. I could say I could say a lot of, uh things to people i can like as far as insulting <laughs> to people yeah you know, like calling people jeffrey dahmer like and, that was hilarious. and and then um or seeing a bunch of guys with uh tank tops and telling them that oh is this like a prison game you guys are around and you guys are circle jerking each other and saying shit like that like i i just had just a f- fun time or just and then it's like doing like there's more creativity out there i just could do not saying like not i mean ghost sound doesn't have that they they do have that for sure and i just felt seeing that was more free like do the things i can i i I would like to do and uh i I had fun it was just a a lot of fun and i'm i'm hoping maybe if if they they let me or wherever it happens uh, i can go back Round two. And do the fiftieth, fiftieth for that. Fight. Yeah, yeah. If I do, I mean, if I do go, I, I. Then again, I, I, I would love to go back to Ghost Town because I, I, I love doing that. So I'm kind decisions, of decisions, decisions. Yeah, and if I do Ghost Town, I would, I would run with Adam. I think me, I would be. It'd be a great, a great time to, for us, me and Adam, to be actually do running partner stuff again like for for uh actually for a whole season not for just few like two weeks and yeah it, it just i think we were doing i think during its time when we were running partners we were just so i was so focused on doing like what i wanted to do and trying to figure out like how to evolve this character and try and figure out what i could do and and i just and he he was doing his own shit too so we were trying to like I, I was trying to understand like how we can you know be compatible and just actually besides not yell at each other and fucking birdcage well, let's do other shit and um but like we got like i said we got sidetracked from just doing our own stuff and and every time he runs with me i was too fast and he would go or he would go off into a different direction and or i was going off in a different direction am i and, am i the only person that's ever fed you a funnel kick as hostile um i don't know i don't know have you heard of that story vincent or no i want to say yes but tell it again uh there was one night i was sitting on the bench in kmart and uh he was right next to me and he was just being he was being him but he was also kind of being the real him because he knew it was me and i knew it was him and uh i had a funnel cake just like midway just eating it i'm like i looked at him like you want some and he was like yeah 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 and i was like (laughs) Here, eat the funnel cake, and he eats the fucking funnel cake right there, and he just takes out and goes, "Thank you," and he just runs away. <laughs> I had one uh, person gave me cheese, like cheese dip. At least that's something about this? good. Okay, so next, <laughs> next year you, you get you get to buy the funnel cake. Oh. So oh. I had in 2017. I gave uh, someone had. Oh no! Actually, you know what? I found it on the floor, so <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> oh, cheese touch, bro! No, I found it on the floor. So it was 2017, 
new origin of this whole hostile character came out right and then the second to the last night i want to say i saw this cheese dip fall all over the floor i don't know where they i don't know i just i don't know where exactly it was that i want to guess it was like by the windmill mm -hmm. i saw it and i was like oh you know it i'm in, in this adrenaline rush having a great time with this character i'm like this is great then um i i so i picked up the floor and it was still full like it was like i guess a quarter of it just came off and it was on the floor so i grabbed it and i put it all over my face and then during the time though i had a mask so like the, my mask was filled over with like cheese and all that it was dripping on my chin and then i was going up to people and i was like chase chase then <laughs> Um, and I was like just probably over my face and I dropped it. I left. He dropped <laughs> I was a, but I, I had other like I guess other shit just happened. I, I I mean I don't know who really gave me like as far as like food. I think people gave me uh I remember someone gave me boysenberry punch. Oh Adam gave me boysenberry punch and I spit it over <laughs> in front of Birdcage. Yeah. He was like, "Do you want some more?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, give me some." Why, why, did, like, why does Adam sound like Billy Madison? Because he does. <laughs> that's how he talks. Oh, yeah, how, talks. Wait, how does he talk? He's just like, "Do you want some boysenberry punch right now?" Mm -hmm. so like, yeah, 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 buddy. Are you talking about Little Nicky? I don't. Oh yeah. Yeah, Little, little Nicky. Better. Yeah. Goes, hey, here, buddy. He wants some right now. He's um, like, I didn't but, get in the flask. <laughs> get in the flask right now. That's I, I, but, I, I need to talk to him before Han starts. I'm like, can you come up to me and just yell, get in the flask, and then run away? Like, I would die, bro. We will talk to you. He loves talking to people. I know. If I see you guys at Midsummer Scream again, like I did last year, I'm going to be like, hey, Adam, we need to talk about something I need you to do for me when, when you see me in person. I, if I have to text you to remind you that I'm coming, I'm going to do it. You know, he's the only one that wants me to talk to talk like him. I guess when other people talk like him, he uh, <laughs> he gets offended. <laughs> that means you, right. that means you've just earned a level of respect that no one else has. So, well, I run with him for so long, and I'm one of his good friends. So I just like come out of run with him. Yeah, I think that's why we we would work. I think it would be really fun that we run together because we. I didn't we just wreck shit over there on freaking well, uh, Ghost Town with me and him. Well, death went bye bye, so. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Well, I mean, with him, it, that me and him were, you know, really good with that too. We, it was more of a, a nonstop working around and does, scaring each other. Does that and technically mean death died? Um. How do you kill no. death? Because you just. Uh... No, he he's a uh, he still exists. I my thing is is that I mean it might be controversial to say his character now could be replaceable, and I'm saying that just out as like like there could be someone something. that comes out and does death, but then they do their own version of death. Yeah, they could. And I mean, they the, could do that with any of our characters. Though. They could do that with any I'm of our characters. We have a... You have the mailman. Now you got the pony rider. <laughs> yeah. But they do that with, I think, with Glows the Bride. Well, yeah. Her like, and, did her you guys Jean, hear about this? Her and Jean have two very different brides and you can't even uh -huh. compare the two even if you wanted to because they're so different and they're so great and they're so unique on their own you don't even need to compare the two like they're both great for their own reasons well i heard from this i i, I won't say who told me but but i heard that when this past season for auditions they let i think a few people audition for death and bride and they uh you know it was something that just in case you know, you never know that they were that like with Glow is not motivated to come back or she doesn't do yeah, the bride I mean, that, that, in their expectations. Iconic, you know, kind of roles in the in the sense that like they've they've been a staple of haunt for so long 
that it would just kind of feel a little weird to not have them be there. So like, it does make sense that they were, you know, they're, they're actively trying to like fill those roles in case the people who have played them aren't going to come back. Cause I mean, I'm one day, like we're all not going to come back. Right. And no. so like one day I'm sure that, that there will, if anyone, if, you know, someone wants to do it, someone will be another mailman or someone will be another hostile, you know, however many I'm years down the line after, i'm gonna audition after you all. i think i asked I'm you i think after, i i'm gonna audition after you all leave and just steal all your characters good luck um but like Not it, good it's, luck. Uh, i could do it okay well good luck then but like i'm saying is is that like i've i think i've asked you before vincent is that who would you want to be replaced for the mailman like See, what would be how about we how about we just do this actually what would as far as like stable characters including yours hey. mm-hmm. you, yours can be a disabled character yours is like potentially a stable character like what who can replace those stable characters as far as the bride death yours so it's, maybe me. it's before you answer that i need one request from from vincent and that is for next season i want your mailman to be more accurate to the mailman from jingle all the way played by sinbad um <laughs> I feel I've seen it. Why? When he, he goes, Rodney he King. Goes, goes, Rodney Why? King. Why? <laughs> Why? Get a turtle man. Oh, All right, God. go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, I don't know. That that's a hard question because, like, I feel like for. Do you think it's a controversial question? I don't think it's controversial. I think it. It's. I think. I guess the only way that it would be considered controversial is if like you're actively trying to kick someone out of a role when they're like, maybe not ready to, or like, you know what I mean? Like if there were, if for whatever reason, like someone had, you know, like beef with me or whatever. And they're like, I don't like Vincent. So I'm going to kick him out of the mailman role. And I'm going to say, Oh, like, I think Lucio would be a good mailman. And like, like you're trying to like kind of replace me when it's not really, well, that's like, a personal choice. That's a personal choice of theirs. Well, yeah. You got it. You got to think of that as they're, they're going to pick as a whole. They're picking yeah. as a team. That That's what I'm saying though. I don't think that it, it would be controversial. Um, like, unless it was something for that reason. But I think it, it like, that's a hard question because I think for like, for the bride and like death, like those are kind of, you know, iconic characters now. And I think more so with, with death, um, it's like, like Beggs has been the only person to do death. Right. And like prior to, to glow doing the bride, the only person to do the bride was Jean. And I think, you know, glow has talked about it. Um, and I think even Dieterman has talked about it when like Jean was kind of, you know, Hey, this is my last year. And they, they hey, brought in a couple on. different people. Dickerman. Okay. Oh my, I don't know him as that. I can't call him that. I can though. So I'll just, I'll, every time you say Dieter, I'm going to, I can't call him that. (laughs) Dieter knows I love him. But, uh, you know, they, they, they ran some, some different people out to, to see who might be a good fit for the bride. And, you know, eventually they settled up, they, you know, Glow kind of stepped into that role and, and she's taken it to where it is now. But I, it's hard, like, that's a very hard question because I think that, like, sometimes you don't know who, like who who's able to fulfill that role right like it's it's you can put anyone in that role but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to excel at it and like be good at it like like glow is the perfect example like glow is a very different bride than what gene was from my understanding i i never got to like see gene scare at least i don't remember getting to to see her scare but like they're two very different ty- like styles of, of scare, but they're still very good at like respect like in their own category, right? So like if someone like for me, for example, I think that I'm a very aggressive scarer and I'm I have a very like intimidating presence. So I think that if someone were to do the mailman a different way that like wasn't that, I think personally, I think that it would be a little funny. Like, I don't think it would quite work as well. And I think that there is definitely some roles where a certain type of, like, a style of scare works better and works for that role. And I think that if you tried to change anything about that, that it wouldn't quite translate as well. And I think mm-hmm. I think it would be harder to replace death than it would be the bride. But 
that's also me speaking because you know death has only been played by one person so there there hasn't been the opportunity to see like a different take on it yeah that would be the same thing with your character too I mean, like, and like then, if someone tried to do hostile but they did it completely different than than the way you did obviously it like would it it wouldn't really feel like the hostile that we kind of know right hostile that, that would be hostile they, they, insane yeah and if they were if they were doing it a very gentle way of doing also that i feel like in some ways i'll be kind of disrespectful <laughs> kind of <laughs> in some ways i'm like you guys are not you're not doing it that there, there's a aggression towards this character there's an aggression this medicine kind of character there's an insanity in this type of character so you have to i feel like um you don't understand what you you have to understand actually sorry is that you have to understand like the psychological of it like you have to study off through this like what makes what makes a silent character a silent patient what makes a silent patient actually a silent patient and you have to like you, like research that and how they are and like what their what their whole mind what their you know their their yeah, their their mind yeah, what they're all about, what they're, uh, wh how they, how they are in various of the uh, sceneries, like how they, how they react towards a death or how they re react towards Merrick, um, you know, in some ways or how they react towards guests. And, uh, it's, you know, that, um, but if they were doing it in a way where they're fucking around it, but then again, I already have people that, you know, portray me in other haunts. I already have three of them so far. You do, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have three people. You know, I am pretty sure these people are watching it right now. So <laughs> I see you. I see you right now. <laughs> I guess it, it's hard to 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 go back to your question. Is like I can't like personally for me. I can't see anyone else that is currently working at knots like at least on streets because i obviously i can't go into the mazes and stuff and i can only really see like ghost town and then you know i catch glimpses of other scare zones when i come as a guest but like i can't see anyone else doing the mailman how i'm doing it right like right now so but like it's hard to be like oh well no one else can do it because i, I don't know that like i haven't seen people in the mazes and i also haven't seen you know like i don't know you know, so in two years, some some kid could come in and be like, and just completely kill, right, and be a good mailman. Yeah, I, yeah Anthony, I do know that like no one else has ever done that before. I'm doing and my tryout I'm right now. What are you talking about? That's my tryout. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were you were referencing. Tell me, I got the, the job. Just let me know I got the job when you retire. That's all I need to know. I'll I'll you'll be my look. Like you're about to I send him a bill or something. <laughs> Be like, yeah. hey, man, I'm retiring. But you're, but, but I, I get, but what you're trying to get is, is that like, well, I'm, I understand what you're trying to get at, and I think what, pe what upper manager was wants to see, is that they want to see a different version of that. They say like, okay, well, we see this other version of Vincent's. Okay, let's see a version of this person's like version of the mailman. See, like, um, this, this is all serious. If I were to do Vincent's character, I would take a much I'm not saying you're not scary or creepy, but I would take a different approach and vibe from what you're doing. I would. Be how would? Yeah. How would? How would? Okay, that's a question for both of you. How would both of you play the mailman? I would do it creepy. Like I would make the envelope one of my biggest scare tactics, and here's why: you could pull out an envelope, like you can look at a guest and kind of slowly turn around at somebody, and that alone already fucking freaks a guest out, right? Mm -hmm. But to mention, if you reach in your bag and you're reaching for something, like, the guest's mind is going to be like, what the fuck is he pulling out of his bag right now? You know? And I pull out the bag and I'm slowly handing it to them, but I'm doing it, like, very creepy. And I'm walking mm -hmm. slowly towards them. That's that Right there, they're going to slowly start walking, and their walk's going to get faster and faster. And then I'm going to get faster and faster and faster and go for a fucking chase. That's how I would approach mm -hmm. it. I would approach it more creepy, uh, less dialogue. Uh, I think the dialogue works great with you, uh, but mm -hmm. let's be honest. Most of the time I've seen you, it's just been BS. <laughs> yeah. it's I BS. think the one I, I'm not the, complaining the, about it. It's, I love it, and and you know I do. I I purposely tell you to do shit, and you're like, yeah, I got, got you. <laughs> I think I mean, you no, walk in a way like a mailman too, which is kind of funny because the way you walk is, I, 
if you see mailman walking well, the way they walk it's kind of fucking funny like There's they walk this, they, they have this huge they have this huge lunge that they walk it's, and it's trying. funny but like every person says that i walk funny and like i kind of notice it when i'm doing it but i, I kind of don't but i feel like i'm like bobbing like the entire time like i'm just like yeah you oh, are, are you yeah yeah no? <laughs> you're you're lunging you're lunging you're bobbing your head at the same time and it, it's <laughs> funny. the way that i like think of it is i kind of think of it like i don't like uh like jujitsu or like wrestling like shooting for a takedown so like i kind of have that like you know that that stance of where like all right like i'm ready to tackle you and and you yeah know, do something. And, and like i feel like i just kind of like walk like that and i like alternate stances like that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah i i think that too i mean at the mine mine it was weird and ghost town mine was like like I wasn't lunging like I would do short walks like I would I feel like I feel I don't know like how to you take like like a couple short steps and then like one big step and then like yeah <laughs> it was so weird like three big steps and then like a short step and like you would just like have this weird like it never really like repeated like it, it was a like it was it was a very like random thing like walk that yeah. you had. But like you definitely alternated between like short steps, big steps, big steps, short steps. <laughs> I did. I I, 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 don't... I one day want you to go as the mailman in full blown like character. And I'm talking like you gotta be like the modern day mailman. Carry like a stack of things with you and be like <laughs> sorting the mail as you're going and shit and then BAM scare. I would put mail I put mail on my face, stick on mill on my face or even around my body and uh, every time a guest will come by i'll rip one off i'll give it to them and so then... that was that was the original idea um, oh shit, man <laughs> just took so your idea the 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 original idea that i had for the man man was that i wanted to do almost like a little tear away for my face but i wanted a like a flap in my cheek and i wanted to have like magnets in it and i was gonna put aloe vera so that it would be like slimy and, and gooey and i would i was gonna put that like under the flap and then have a letter sticking out of like my cheek and then that way like when i would walk up to somebody i could walk up peel like my cheek up pull the letter out and then hand it to them and it would be all slimy and gooey and it would be like it was you and know, then you it smell, you're like this smells like aloe vera this shit smells pretty good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, mm, citrus, right yeah, citrus. it smells like mint <laughs> But yeah, that's a good idea. But like yeah, that was, that was that was one of the original ideas for how I wanted my face to look. Yeah, I'd go for me. It would just be a less vocal version of it and more creepy, like staring you dead in the eye. So like, I'm gonna give you this leather, whether you like it or not. Like, kind of vibe. Like, there's no way around it. You're gonna get this leather, whether you're dead or alive. Like, you're getting it. You yeah. could be buried. With Does your character? Like sorry, sorry to interrupt. So, does your character get scared of dogs? no <laughs> i don't like the dog I, I like in ghost town i don't like the werewolves but like i'm not like scared of them mm. but, run away like a <laughs> like I, a mailman I, right yeah like there's there's definitely like beef between us i don't know what the beef is but like i like uh aj uh the werewolf aj um like i, I always say something stupid like oh like you smell like dog oh, or, like the gargoyle like, yeah yeah, or or you know, something something stupid along those lines. <laughs> or just you know, quick little banter between characters and stuff. Yeah. Did you have any other ones that were like you were against that you were like as mm -hmm. characters? So no. So like in in like Ghost Town, I don't. I don't know. I'm not like huge on intertwining like character stories and stuff like i i don't want to say like oh the mailman like has a uh was like friends with with this person before the curse and then like this and that because like as far as like my character uh like my origin story is that like i i was just found like i was i got lost wandering you know delivering mail and i died of, of dehydration fell off my horse hit my head whatever and uh, because I was so lost, like some, cause like, if you look at like the original pony express trail, it went nowhere near Calico. 
so my and like my story is like I got so lost that I was supposed to be in Northern California and I ended up in Southern California. And so mm-hmm. like I died in the desert and I like someone came across my body, you know, as they were doing whatever, and they brought me back to Boot Hill to bury me in like an unmarked grave. And then uh like when the witch did her thing, like I kind of came back and and am doing my thing. So like I technically have like no relationship with the people of Calico. I just kind of happened to be a body that was there. Yeah. Um, that, that would make like sense. 20, it sounds a lot like 2019. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It was like a body that was it, there with that now a story though. <laughs> it, yeah. Exactly. It makes it I don't know. I feel like it makes it a little bit easier for me because I'm not like well, oh, I can't talk to this person well, yeah, because it doesn't. Tie, yeah, you don't have to tie in anyone. Like you're a stranger, it's, so you it's can just talk like, to hey, like I'm just, I'm just here. I don't know you, but like I'm gonna talk to you, yeah. and then like, all right, cool, I'm done talking to you. All right, I'm gonna go talk to this person, and, and like it, it makes sense because like in the grand scheme of things, like we're a, a town, right? So like, and I like to think that in the in the olden days, like people were a little bit friendlier, so they were, they were more open to having like random conversations with like strangers or like passing by and stuff so like it it, to me like as far as like character wise like that makes sense it makes sense for me to just kind of be out walking through ghost town and say oh look there's there's morty the mortician let me say something to him real quick or you know what i mean like oh there's a werewolf let me talk to the to the werewolf yeah you don't know how badly you guys talk about this stuff and you don't know how badly i want to go out there and scare with you guys so fucking bad you should do it. I, I know. Should just I, do it one year. Not, I can't commit to stuff. a year. I can't. I mean, With hey, everything what's the, what's... I do, I can't commit to a year. I can commit to like a night, but I can't commit to a year. Like you commit I mean, to, yeah. Then do like. I mean, that's why you're doing other these other like home haunts, or you're supporting these home haunts. You could do for one night. I legit like, want to build my own haunt, like a f- like in November, because I know for a fact, ain't no one can't fucking work it in October. Maybe even later. I'll probably do it later. I want to build a haunt in the off season so I can literally invite all you motherfuckers to come out, and that gives me an excuse to finally be like, I built this shit. I'm scaring with these motherfuckers. Uh, midsummer. Mm-hmm. Midsummer. Yeah, there you go. You could rent out the place, and you could ba- make a maze. How much money do you That's... think I make, Lucio? <laughs> I don't know. He said, rent out the whole, like, rent out the whole convention, and just make a big ass maze. I mean, that's a dream. Aren't you like? Aren't you like? Besties with freaking Rick West. You can throw a bone for you. The convention, they just rent it out for fucking. That don't throw mean a shit. Boner. They still got to make their fucking money, bro. He goes, hey, dude, I can throw this for you for 25 bucks. Not to mention, where you... the fuck am I going to get the money to build the shit? Uh, uh, well, uh, you can find well, trees. That still costs money, bitch. <laughs> you can chop trees. You can make it to, like, you can make a two by four. You need us some PVC pipes and some trash bags. Yeah, you could put like you can get some black tarps from Walmart. They're about like eighteen dollars a piece. I come up with a scare zone idea. D- hey man, I, Horror Nights did it. Just have a black hallway. You're you, then you could say that you got the same production value as Horror Nights. Yeah, <laughs> call it the. I don't want to be park. known for the guy who makes a maze with black so, walls. So, Anthony, here here was your press pass for Horror Nights this year, and I just said something, so it just out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they watch this video, but okay. Uh, you do that. Oh, I mean, no. I I don't. I think that that would be really fun. I no, that's why. Like, I would love to put on my own little thing in the off season, just so I can hire like a lot of the people that I love watching and shit. Just it gives me an excuse to scare with you guys. That's literally the only reason why I would put it on. I would actually put time and effort into it to make it a very good haunt. But I would essentially be like, okay, this is the idea of the haunt. This is the date I'm going to put it on. You have this long if you want to be in it to come up with the fucking character. Um, and yeah, have fun. There, that, that is actually why I think being as a guest and witnessing you know, everything as a, like seeing these characters scare and doing their work. Actually, it's kind of fun. And then in this, I actually I mean, not I, 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 I designed now. I didn't get to like the drawing portion of shit, but story wise and kind of layout and everything. And I kind of, I kind of detailly wrote what each room would be, but I legit designed a maze based around an insane asylum, and it had a full blown story and everything. Oh shit! Well, should I talk about it? Yeah, yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. 
off yeah. camera. Off wait, camera. So, wait, off, off camera. But like, yeah, it's kind of uh, being witnessing as a guest is actually pretty enjoyable. Uh, I, I mean, as the times I went as a guest, it was actually pretty enjoyable seeing them and and laughing or being scared. Uh, just being entertained in general because I'm just trying to get used to that now because you know being maybe my last year and or maybe till three years after being my last year I I don't know just like I wanted it to be my last year for the 10th year but I'm I'm needed to get used to that because because once I sit as a guest for a full season that's gonna be harder. That's gonna. I. I'm pretty sure other people are gonna feel the same way because you do have this sense of dopamine kicking in and go and like I would want that. I. I want. I want to go out there and go yeah. scare again because like I. I've. You know, you you see things that you can do as your character and go out there like oh I could do this like as better as this person or just like going out there and scare in general i, I scare with my I, my I see my friends scary i would like to scare with them too and doing that or what i could do here and here and uh i'm trying to get used i'm i i need to get used to it because it's gonna it's gonna suck but i i would i i want i would love to have it as my 10th year i think but if anything happens i think i would be my third a perfect a perfect way to to kind of to wrap this up, I'd love to hear both of your opinions about this. What is something that you want to, you want to come out of the 50th for just yourself overall, as far as like your character or scaring or whatever it may be like, what do you want? What do you want to get out of the 50th event, 50th anniversary? Like if, you know, if you guys do both come back, like what is your goal for the 50th and what do you want to achieve and and get out of it? You go, that's your first one. Cause I don't know. Uh, so I mean, like, like selfishly, I want to be a one of the best, if not like the best monster on Ghost Town, and uh, like the I might like catch flack for this, but like I want to be, you know, the I want to be considered like, hey, that guy's like the guy in that zone, right? And that's just like for me selfishly like i because for me like i want like eventually i want my character to to be like an icon right like i want it to turn into the bride or death or whatever just because i don't know like to me that that'd be cool right if you know i can stop working knots one day and the mailman is still there then like that way like i know that like my impact on knots will be there long after i i have left right um I think in terms of like general for the 50th, I just, I like, I want this to be, you know, the, I want this to be one of the years that like people always talk about. Right. So like in, you know, 10 or 15 years when, you know, Lucio and I, maybe we're working, maybe we're not or whatever, like we can reminisce about, you know, the, the good years. Right. Like I think Lucio, you know, like you, you and Aaron and, and Vi and stuff have, have talked about and, and Wyatt, uh, like 2016 being like a really good year for ghost town and like aaron has talked about you know 2011 2012 being really good years for ghost town or, or knots as a whole right and like i remember like even i remember like 2009 2011 like 2012 2013 like those were all really good years for knots like as the parks you know ghost town was good carnival was good necropolis was good you know like all the mazes were good and i feel like we haven't really had you know, one of those like memorable or like impactful years in a little while. So I want like the 50th to be like one of those years. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, it's kind of the same reason as uh, Vince to put it, but in a different way, like selfishly, I would want to be like the best monster out there and be, you know, the person that talks about about my the ups and downs to what i did as a monster out there and be like okay well this person came out as like the best the best uh, or not the best to and like to interrupt i i also want to be like someone that like 
I, I guess I want to be like a role model and, and like to, to yeah. not make it sound like so egotistical, which it's totally not. Like if you, if you know me and like you talk to me about this, I, I could care less about haunt fame or, you know, whatever there is. But like, I want to, I want to be someone that like people can look up to and be like, Hey, like that guy's a really good, good at scaring. I want to be like him. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I just realized what the fuck your background picture was. And I remember we was talking about it on an episode before. And it just made me fucking laugh right now. I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> we were talking about that like a few podcasts I'm ago. Is, I'm giving a heartfelt speech about how I want to inspire other people. And you just start busting. You look at that. this. Because, again, like, I realized what you were holding. I seen the pe- I'm like, what the fuck are those words? And then I finally put it together. It says pizza. <laughs> and then it's you holding the pizza box. And I'm like. He talked about this. I remember. That's probably what he put it up there for. <laughs> Easter egg, fam. Just didn't realize it's at the end of the episode. But yeah, I, I, I think, I think, I, I understand what you're saying as far as role models go. Um, because Aaron was, I know Aaron was kind of touching a little bit on that too, of like who he looks up to, and you know, he's hoping he can live that same same positive energy, and he's hoping if he ever comes back to do management, that he can give off that positive energy of being that kind of role model to boost someone up and to make them the very best that they absolutely can be, and. I get what you're you're saying because like that was one of the things we talked about um, last week was, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's gonna be people that come back that that cast lead that did this before and all they want is the best for this event and they're gonna push their cast to give it 110 percent because they want everyone on that team to be the best and they want the event as a whole to be the best and we want to put that back to rank number one again. You know what I mean? So well, yeah, I, I 100% and then agree with you. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I I would I would agree the same thing. I, it's like it's like Vince said. I want to be a role model towards anybody that, and then also being part and for the fiftieth event, I would love it to be a actual comeback, in some ways because it's uh you know due to what happened last season, it will be a really good comeback. Going like okay, they came, they they are because whatever happened last season kind of has this and especially during this like as off season goes on and you hear about the boys bear festival and all these other events going on without entertainment you kind of when this comes back as a huge comeback it, you kind of realize like oh dots is like very resilient towards these stuff like they are plant they've been playing on this and now they the fact that 50th is like the biggest event ever for as far as halloween you like like horror nights is not going to top that off or six flags is not going to top that off and yeah i just love to i want to be that role model and also to be like being around that history and i i, I be around that history the fact that i was around that or me and vincent were around that time where 50th uh that 50th anniversary was like a huge event i know bro and it was a big documenting it. yeah and um and being also like just I want to come back to as as management and advocate this whole uh, morality of what to do at haunt, being the right person, being doing the right thing at haunt, and also what is not the right thing to do at haunt. In you know, like being that's why I have this podcast too, because like I I get deep down and like deep down, that's why my podcasts are so fucking long. Is that like I we not only talk about what. each and every backstory they have for these scare actors or former scare actors, but they understand what it's like. I mean, what they understand all like the, the morality of it, what, what the shit that they used to do. That was like, that was funny. It's not funny anymore. Or the, or the what is the right thing to do out there as currently now, or, you know, there's a bunch of shit like you do. What is the right and wrong thing and well, how to be the best role model you can be set yourself as an example. Uh, it's just I want to I, I want to come back. I want to come out as just being a good role model and showing others like, hey, if you can be and if you can stay at Ghost Town for X amount of years and going to Carnival and and being the best in carnival too like i don't know i mean being a good being a good scare actor there i'm not saying i'm one of the best there's a lot of good uh carnival actors out there there's a lot of them that this past season but like maybe you could be the one of the best out there that 
I mean, you can do it. I mean, if I did it, you can do it. And uh, and uh, like like I said, I'm glad that I have a platform to talk about those kind of like those those strategies to do that. Yeah. Where you know, what are the fundamentals to do? Uh, um, yeah, I, I would. I, I want to. It's per, it kind of applies the same thing with whatever Vince has said. I think we all can. I think a lot of people can agree um, and attest to whatever Vince would say. Because they do want to be the best role models. They want to be. They want to be at an icon. They want to. They, they do want to be a, the very best. <clears throat> but they and um. Uh, I I want to be the best out there. I mean, I'm glad that I got to do these promo vid- videos. I didn't want to. I didn't know how. I I didn't know that I was gonna be in these promo videos or these pictures for knots. But they fucking asked me. They just asked me to do it because they saw me and they were thrilled that i actually did pretty well and they just i didn't ask for that i they came up to me and i said sure you know and um and uh, as fact that it happened in carnival in two weeks rather than my character and ghost sound in five years i've said this before a hundred times but like it's crazy how fast the, the attention i got for that kind of character that's why I want to kind of stay for the second year, see what else I could do. Um, mm-hmm. That's if I do. I mean, who, who who knows? Maybe I can. Maybe I do come back as in Ghost Town, do something else, or do something else in other zones. I think it's very well said, right there, man. You heard it here first, man. Uh, the fiftieth mm-hmm. is looking like it's gonna be a good one, man. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Uh, get a lot of coverage from it and see what what's new. What's uh, what's uh updated and uh how the event's gonna be overall man i'm excited but what do you guys think are you guys excited for the 50th anniversary of not scary farm leave some comments down below let us know i want to give a special shout out and thank you to uh lucio you the man thank you appreciate you thank you guys you guys are uh yeah this is i watched this a lot uh i watched the one with aaron you guys are just um putting on really good content like I said, Anthony, I'm very, um, I'm glad you you are a lead example of the the haunt YouTubing. So you uh, doing this is very good, and you're, you're I'm very proud of you. So and also Vincent, I'm glad that you're doing this too. So you're, this is you're just being, trying to get podcast numbers up. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm like, but you're doing, you're 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 working on it. You you have a very good uh, knowledge of what knots is like. So I you, know, I, 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 I yeah. Vincent Vincent knows. I just always like to throw that in there because he knows that. Hey. I'm, you know what? One day I'll, I'm just gonna start my own podcast, and then I'll I'll forever be the have the all time leading numbers. <laughs> that's that's do it, dude. That, that's do me. it. I'm Fucking do it. I'm I'm in the lead right now in the in the indies. Well, yeah. yeah. It, 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 you I'm notice how about... I called our area the indies because we are the indies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's the indies yeah. and the pros. We're in the indies still, and I gotta say the indies are a lot of fun. I don't know if I ever want to leave the indies. But I uh, I really appreciate you guys having me on. I I, I love uh, love having you be on your podcast and you be on mine. With both of you guys and you know just shooting the shit, and talking, just talking about haunt and talking about other various of subjects wherever we could talk about. It's a lot yeah. of fun, man. I know when you had him on a couple of weeks, I was like, well, we got to get him on eventually, and then you hit me up to be on. So I was like, it all worked out. It all worked out. Um, it all sinks in, brother. I know AJ couldn't be here today. He had a busy day. We wish we could have been here for this one. But uh, AJ, we love you. We'll see you next week. Uh, and speaking of next week, I can uh, happily announce our next guest for uh, next. Um, I believe we're going to try to do it on Wednesday because that's the only day he was available. And I think that was the only day out of the week I was available. Um, we're going to shoot this one Wednesday. Uh, the green clown himself, Mr. Guillermo. Um, it's gonna be a yeah. lot. Of, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about what it's like to uh, to party over at Six Flags and uh, how it was okay. like transitioning into Horror Nights. And we'll probably even shoot the shit about other things as well. The guy can talk. He is hilarious. He is great. I cannot <laughs> wait to chat with him again. One of my favorite people to talk to. Uh, so st- stay tuned next week. And I uh, I may have already locked in a week two guest, but you guys won't find out till the week after. So uh, stay tuned, man. <laughs> we're we're getting close to that season finale. Thank you for being part of season three, Lucio. We love you. Go check Thank out. You. Uh, love LS3. you guys too. Check out the LS3 yes. podcast available everywhere you can listen to podcasts uh, or stream podcasts on. Uh, go check that out. Uh, you'll you'll hear the most recent episode, what I was just on, um, which I believe was what forty nine, right? 
Yeah, 49. 49. Episode 49. I felt but a little and, uh, disrespected that I wasn't the 50th, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. You're like the oh, second to the last. I mean, what? come on. Yeah, it's come okay. Just, We're good. You know, think about it. I was on the road yeah. to 50, and I think I was on like three of those podcasts on that road. So Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, but, but yeah, keep, keep our eye on the 50th. Uh, I think I'm, I'm hoping the 50th. Uh, I'll tell you guys off here, like who, who I'm having an idea. Well, that'll be bringing next week, on. apparently, because you do it weekly, right? So that'd be next. Yeah. Week? Well, next week will be yours. Well, this as of t- as of today. But as of next this week. recording, it will be the 50th for next week. So if you want to announce, yeah, it, you can. But it's up to you. No, I won't. I I haven't booked it yet. So that's damn it! <laughs> I was trying to get that exclusive, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I ha- as far as ideas, I have I have two I, uh, two people. I have an idea of who I want to bring on if they're one of them is available. So nice. All right, we'll stay tuned. 50th episode of the LS3 podcast is amongst <laughs> us. Um, and yeah, guys, you guys have a great and spooky day or night whenever you're watching this or afternoon. And we will see you guys next week for another episode. Wait, hold on. Before we go off air, we got to get a little old school. (laughs) From you, from Al Pacino. Oh, hoo -ah, hoo -ah. (laughs) 